Yeah. Okay, so we are officially live. Let's have a look. Holy shit, I can see myself. <laughs> look like a numpty. <laughs> Do we need to tilt tilt that camera down a bit? No. That one? Do you think? It's fine. Looks fine? Okay. It's fine. Right, so, hey, we've got people joined already. Amazing. Ray, how are you feeling today? Yeah. First show, I'm all right. Yeah. I already start smoking because I can't, you know, sitting for two hours <laughs> until you set up all the cameras and, and the mics and stuff. But yeah, I'm already starting. I'm sweating, smoking. man. Yeah, I know. I can see. <laughs> <laughs> you even put the suit on. So Listen. I, guys, I never seen Ozu Usman that officially Listen, uh, man. Look, up. last time, yeah, last week when we did that video, I thought I was dressed fine. But then apparently after the video, everyone started giving me like, you know, comments like, oh, you look, you know, you look crappy, you know, Ray looked all nice and everything. So I was like, you know what? Nah, man, here's a three piece. What's up? <laughs> cool. Okay. I didn't want to wear a tie because I thought that might be pushing it too far. You know, I didn't want to look ridiculous. I didn't want to be overdressed. Alex, how do I look? You don't want to know. <laughs> okay, so today we're going to be talking about Cuban cigars versus New World cigars. So Ray, you should be smoking a Cuban today, right? Uh, potentially. Potentially, potentially, I can. I will smoke Cuban. Not right now. Because so. that was the plan, man. You were yeah, I will Cuban. smoke. Yeah, yeah, I will smoke Cuban in okay. some point. Uh, I have a lineup of uh, one of my favorite Cubans, which I rediscovered recently. Short Churchill. Short Churchill, oh. 2013. I managed to bought four boxes five years ago. They wow. smoke five half of the box and they was awful. Awful taste wise, not construction wise. So I decided to put them back in the humidor. I didn't touch them since January. Yeah. And January I smoked one and I managed to make almost 95% of the cigar in the one ash without dropping the ash. Really? Yeah. That's pretty unbelievable. And I smoke another one about two weeks later because I want to see, you know, are they really that good, all of them? Yeah. And the second one wasn't that bad. Wasn't that good as the first one. I sent one to my friend, he didn't smoke it yet, and uh, I have another one now, so we'll see if that will be same decent good old cigar. So let's talk about the cigar that I'm smoking then. So I'm smoking a Oliva Serie V Milanio Reserva. Uh, Alex, you're smoking, Grand Reserva. Alex, you're smoking the same, aren't you? Yeah. Um, so mine's 2014, right, Ray? Uh, yeah, one is 2014. One this one's 2014. Alex has got the 2013 one, which is the... Is that when it won the Cigar Aficionado thing? It won in 2014. Mm. And uh, I believe the 2013 release been, uh, been actually the release they smoke and they reviewed that will be the number one. So even if you when you see the cigar, when I give you the cigars... This is really good, man. They look different. One of them looking way darker than the other one. Even yeah. the band is slightly different uh, shape of the color. Because they changed so, it in 2014, right? Well, they didn't change nothing in theoretically. Just you can see the difference between different uh, uh, batches, hmm. probably. Interesting. But, you know, I thought, because <clears throat> we're going to do a Cuban versus New World cigar discussion... I mean, I mean here's a can of worms. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I uh. thought, I'll smoke a New World today. Normally, I'm always smoking Cubans anyway. That's my favorite. That's what I enjoy. This is a beautiful cigar, though. This is fantastic. I mean, I like I like Oliva anyway. I'm a fan of Oliva. I'm not a fan of. You're not a fan of Oliva? I'm not a fan of. I do like Oliva. Only the Milanios. I don't like the other ones. I smoke Oliva this, uh, this lunch. You know, my lunch time, my lunch break. wasn't break. I work in home. But uh, I smoke Oliva G, Super G. You know, the short pinball. Uh, same year, 2013, I have managed to... 2013, I bought a few boxes of mm. Olivas. I still have them, still keep them. I have half of the boxes full of them. And I smoke Super G. Uh, I Dud. I think it kind of loose from the taste. The Super G is Maduro. Yeah. It's Cameroon. So usually that, they are stronger than the others. Yeah. And it loses a lot of the... You know, yeah, because the majority of it is just strength. It's not really flavor. I, I don't like the G series. I do not like them. It's because it's strong. No, I just I I, I was I like smoking. It was just but it was just flat the whole way through. It was flat. There was Oliva, no... I'm not big fan of the Oliva at all. You know, if I need to pick Oliva, I will pick the triple blend. So that's the Oliva which I will uh, pick. The Serie V, right? 
It's Melania. a triple blend. No, it's a triple blend. Oliva with the green red band with number three on the band. So ah, that's a triple that blend. Uh, if I pick anything from the factory of Oliva, I would go and pick uh, Kane. Kane is my favorite cigar made in Oliva. Kane F, Kane Dentona, Kane Double F. It's crazy strong cigar. You're not gonna be able to smoke that. I can guarantee. Even noobs, some of the noobs are better than Oliva for me. If I pick Oliva, noobs are Oliva, right? Hmm? Noobs are Oliva. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I pick Oliva, as I say, I'll pick uh, probably uh, triple uh, blend or I have Oliva V Diadema, no, which is uh, nine by nine inch by fifty ring gauge. Yeah, nearly four hours. It's a, it's a, it's a more recent cigar, isn't it? No, it was very limited edition of being they started. Oh, you're talking ago. about a different one then? They released them. They released another Diadama recently, the limited edition one. Mm -hmm. That was nine inch. It's a long, long cigar, not mid cigar. Not seen many of them uh, for a sale or any, anything like that. So I managed to have four small couple last year. I still have one or two left in my humidor. Yeah. But I need four hours to smoke that. Yeah, I'm, 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 a of, I'm a slow smoker usually and uh, take me ages and yeah what I'm smoking I'm not not that fancy as you I'm smoking aging room original uh, which is the old f55 the people who smoke the aging room they know f55 it's very interesting cigar one of the it I can say it's pretty unique cigar I never see anything like that cigar in the premium cigars was the strange the wrapper so the wrapper is uh, is basically both from germany it's a dry cured tobacco as the old german technology what they use in in my one of my favorite cigars the european cigars mm. so basically uh i think it's made by hochi blanco in uh lagale in in, uh, in uh, his factory in dominican republic and he bought the wrapper from Germany, which is weird, very weird to buy the back from strange. Germany. That is strange. Yeah, and even in the, even in the look, of, the look of the wrapper is very uh, bumpy, very typical dry cured tobacco, which mm. is odd. Yeah, I believe the wrapper is a uh, uh, Ecuadorian Sumatra. That's what usually Germans use, either Sumatra, either uh, Brazilian tobacco. But yeah, I start with that one. It's uh, I know them. I smoked a few of them before. It's nothing wild, nothing like that. So plenty of time to talk in and, and have a discussion and not thinking about that cigar so the second one second one will be the cuban romeo and juliet well i've got a cuban over here as well i mean the cuban cigar that i've got is the uh which one's got uh monte cristo 2016 limited edition so not one of my favorites but still a good cigar um came in the uh cigar subscription for this month so i thought i'll definitely Crack that one up. Alex, what do you think of the uh, Oliva? It's good. It is good, isn't it? Yeah. It is so it is surprisingly good. Yeah. Oliva I mean, is a cigar which needs aging, in my opinion. Definitely. So definitely. I have Lancero, mm. the, the the normal line Lancero. Amazing. Not the CVV? CVV, yeah. CVV okay, yeah, Lancero. Yeah. Amazing. I smoked new Lancero on an event last year or year before year before because last year we do there's no events year before and that was awful and i'm a big fan of the lancero you know yeah i had the lancero as well not age i mean well had two years worth of age so i thought that might be enough horrible horrible yeah i did not like it i have I had lancero i have seven... the boxes uh i have the g mm. uh i have g in churchill i didn't like that one uh, it's it's a big cigar with not much of a taste. Very bland, opinion, yeah. very bland. So, but I reckon the Melanio or the no, I have as well uh, Oliva V in the sh in the short robusto size. I think it's called number four. It's a 2018. Still need more aging. I smoked one of them recently. I, I don't like it. It's a it's a normal V. Yeah. And need more age. So it's a three years already. Four. Yeah. Need more. I can feel the acidity and the not pleasant stuff in there. So. Cubans versus New World. Now, my first ever video that we put up on the uh, channel was uh, somewhat controversial. I mean, I know you're laughing now because you know a couple of your friends didn't like what I was saying, right? <laughs> but they were nice about it. They weren't they weren't mean or in anything. No, they, no, were, no, they were they were poking fun, but it was it wasn't poking fun in a malicious way. It was poking fun in like a you know what's this guy on about? It was like it was like that. Well, listen, it's your opinion. Yeah, it's yeah. Why you should care about what the people are thinking about it? You like Cubans, you make video for Cubans, that's fine. Mm. You know, it's a, 
that's why I'm here to mix the stuff to, to make a different no, what, perspective on that stuff. But what I'm saying is, I like the fact that the majority of people were very reasonable in terms of how how they responded. People weren't annoyed. People weren't like angry or anything. They were just they were just fine. It was it was quite refreshing to see that. Um, you know, some people might disagree, but disagreeing is perfectly reasonable. You can always disagree with someone. That's, you know, there's no problem with that. But there wasn't any like maliciousness. There wasn't there wasn't anything overly negative. It was just people had their own particular thoughts. But I I, I mentioned a couple of things. So first thing I mentioned was um, the fact that Cuban cigars, you know, they tend to be more reasonably priced in the UK depending on certain brackets. So you've got. One of the comments that a lot of people make is Cuban cigars are all, you know, they, they're too expensive because you can get much cheaper cigars. But you can get cheaper cigars from anywhere. Well, I think if, you, if, you, if you're talking about the price-wise, I think in UK, the price-wise, price, price wise, you know, the prices uh, um, between the New World and the Cuban cigars are quite good. The, the, you know, the, I, you can buy for £20. Yeah. You can buy a decent Cuban. Yeah. But also, these and new world is the same price. Yeah. Even more than that. Yeah. Let's let's compare Monte Number Two, mm. very decent Cuban. How much is Monte Number Two? About twenty six. Twenty six. Potencia Alma Fuerte. How much is Potencia Alma Fuerte? Twenty nine. Mm. So you see that amazing cigar from Cuba, amazing cigar from Nicaragua, mm. and they're pretty much same price. Exactly. If you go in a, in abroad, you you can find that. Uh, that Monte number two probably will be still 15 euro in uh, in some of the countries, but Placencia it might be go less than 15 euro. Placencia is relatively pricey everywhere. Maybe maybe not Placencia. I know, but I know what you mean. I'm I'm just picking out on that one. We we are because in UK the, the 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 majority of the price is combined by the you know the taxation, the import tax, and stuff like that. And and there is no matter if you bring a cigar from Cuba, if you bring cigar from uh, Nicaragua, from US. You still be charged, you know. I've, I've seen Texas Lancero, mm -hmm. which is uh, Alec Brothers cigar, seven by seventy. Yeah, huge cigar. Yeah, it's forty pounds. Forty five pounds. Yeah, forty five pounds. Forty five pounds. It's an awful cigar, guys. <laughs> Sorry for the fans, but it's an awful cigar. Forty five pounds. I'll buy a limited edition Cuban for that money, Happily. and I'll smoke at the same time. So if mm -hmm. I smoke seven by seventy, it will took me two and a half, three hours, maybe more. I'm slightly small, slow smoker. I can buy. Uh, some of the Britannica edition, Lorena or the uh, Ramona Yones number two, uh, 2019. Yes, yes. And it will take me same time. Mm. I'll spend less, and I'll be way more enjoyable. Than that. Yeah. I think the price argument is kind of it. It's played out because if we if we look at it from an overall perspective, cigars in general are relatively similarly priced. However. It kind of it kind of rockets off when you start talking about super expensive cigars, and the major the most expensive cigars in the world are New World cigars, right? The most no, expensive. No, agree. No, no, the most expensive yeah, cigars. Yeah, no, agree. The most well, expensive Gurkha. cigars are the old Cubans. Production. We're not talking about antiques. Standard production. Well, standard production. Because if you if you're going to bring in if you're going to bring in antiques and all that, then you then you're bringing in a layer of sentimentality, which isn't necessarily something that's directly attributed to Cuban. You know, it's not just the fact that it's a Cuban cigar; but it's the, the fact that it's a Cuban cigar from this era, but which that, is a very different that thing. That you related, which is two grand cigar, everyone really is not a normal, not standard production. You can't you buy can, it. Okay, you but need it's, to book an but appointment it's, to go on the place and some guy roll the cigar. Okay, but you. what I mean is it's not like it's it's it has it's not gone through history. It ha it hasn't got a place in history in some sense. It's more of a it's available now. Well I think retail price still Behike Behikas are like Behikas are what? One eighty at the moment? Fifty four? Which which cigar Good, lay, uh, Her Majesty's is, Reserve is like seven a thousand dollars. Which? Her Majesty's Reserve, a thousand dollars for one. Is this, is he be you know is he, is he available for sale? You know, yeah, you could it? you can you could go on web on a website. You could just type it in, and it okay. comes up. Well, maybe, but as I say, it's. Uh... But that, but the point I was making, I'm not trying to say that New World cigars are more expensive. The idea that I was kind of uh, bringing out was the fact that 
this concept of oh Cuban cigars are expensive you know I'd rather buy a new world well, well it depends on what category you're looking at it depends because you've got Vigero cigars if you want they're very budget cigars they don't cost very much at all or you've got you know Cohibas which are going to be the most expensive but that you're talking about the flagship brand so there's a big gap between the flagship brand but also is a requirement you know people wants to buy them yeah I've there's got, a got, there's uh, a demand for it which is never ending yeah it's a never ending demand i have been i have been a uh, witness that i've been in a shop in london oh, i will not mention names and stuff so it's uh, one of the smallest shop in london in london i used to know one of the guys working there so i've going down in london to see him and the shop wasn't open yet mm. so there was a uh, i called the guy i say you come into the shop and stuff like that i say yeah i'm coming soon and there was about five six people out of, uh, queuing on the front of the shop and i was uh, you know there, there was a uh, this is in the morning. Yeah, in the morning. In the morning, five, six people queuing in the shop. Uh, all of them looking with sporting sport trousers. You know, nothing. Can't see that guy waiting in front of the cigar shop. You know, they just, maybe they some just people, yeah, wearing track suits and stuff. Yeah, but they, all that guy is looking slightly dodgy to waiting eight, nine in the morning uh, in front of the shop, cigar shop. They just, buy, they just basically rolled and out of the, bed. The guy opened, so he let me in until he prepared the stuff inside, and I see all the guys waiting. Oh, it's a. Uh, Today is supposed to have a delivery of Bihike and uh, some ta talismans or whatever. See, so th w they know the date and they wait now to be first and get the Bihike. And <laughs> you open the shop, the first guy coming inside and say, I want to buy the Bihike. Say, okay, I can have a few for sale. I want 100 boxes. <laughs> what? Yeah, the guy said, I want 100 boxes. Are you kidding so me? So the guy was from Asia. I think J uh, Japanese or Chinese uh, guy. Clearly wealthy say, individual. Yes. I say, he said, I want 100 boxes. And we, we was looking and say, man, I'm not sure even in UK we can have 100 boxes in total. No. I don't even think Hunter's got it in reserve for that much. Yeah. So the next four or five people enter, same thing. I want all your behike. How many boxes do you have? We was like that. You know, the, guy, the friend of mine say, if I have 1,000 boxes now, they will be sold out in five minutes. It's Imagine. ridiculous. I and know. you know the price of Bahiki in UK. It's not a cheap cigar. It's not. You pay, especially in some shops in London. I mean, the less expensive... You pay 200 pounds a piece some, in some shops. I mean, the less expensive in, uh, in Europe, but not by a great deal. Because even in Europe, there's a, there's a significant demand for these types of cigars. And that's... that's yeah, that's, that's what I mean. But, so... Going back to the first video that I produced, the reason that I produced that video wasn't because I was just trying to be controversial for the sake of it. The reason why I produced that video was because for like the whole time that I had been smoking cigars and exploring all these different brands and so on, everyone just kept dunking on Cuban cigars the whole time. I say everyone, I'm, you know, hyperbole, but you know, I'm exaggerating. Um, but a, a vast majority of people, you've never, you've never said, I've never heard you say anything negative about any particular brand. I've heard you say negative things about an individual cigar that you didn't like, but I've never heard you say anything negative about anything in, a, in an overall, like nothing too general. But I've heard a lot of people say a lot of negative things about Cuban cigars. And anytime I go on YouTube videos or something, there's always been like, there's something like, almost like, you know, there's this like, not an animosity, but just this like constant push of uh, against Cuban cigars. So I thought, you know what, let me push back a little bit. Let me produce a video, which is going to be a little bit positive about Cuban cigars. And the one thing I noticed was the overall response to that video was positive. People were kind of like, oh, finally, finally, someone's saying something good about Cuban cigars. And what that helped me realize is that well, I, I did a bit of research, and I say research, I did a bit of looking into a couple of things, and what I noticed was that a lot of the claims that people make about Cuban cigars, a lot of the major negatives, not necessarily like some of the factual things that you can find from Habanos or whatever, I'm talking about the uh, major negatives, they're coming generally from the US, generally from US retailers. Now, if we're being honest, US retailers have a vested interest in New World cigars. They're not, you know, it's in their interest to promote New World cigars as opposed to Cuban cigars. Because it's not like you can go into a store in the US and go and buy Cuban cigars. 
So I just think it's a little bit disingenuous. I, I don't know. I just feel like it comes from a place which isn't necessarily accurate. Uh, I don't know. There, there always, always will be uh, people versa, people yeah. liking, you know, people say, yeah, the best cigars are Cuban. There's the other people saying the worst cigars are Cuban. Mm. You know, I, I don't, you say that I, there is no brand which I would say 100% that's a crap. Well, you know, I even smoke last week. I smoked Gurkha, which I wasn't smoked before. You know, I, you know me. I don't like Gurkha. Mm, same here. But I always give a chance to a new ones. I know. So I'm not gonna say I'm never gonna buy that cigar because it's Gurkha, because it's made in Rocky Patel, because it's made in uh, Habana or whatever. I, I give a chance to every cigar. Of course. So I, I like Cuban cigars. I like non-Cuban cigars. Mm. You know, I can't, uh, I can't exclude one of them. No. You know, for me, they're hand by hand. Together, I can. I need to but, smoke Cubans. But, I need to smoke. Yeah, Cubans. but the same thing with me. I don't. I, although I prefer Cuban cigars in general, I love New World cigars. I don't have any problems with New World cigars. I'm happily smoking this one. This is a wonderful cigar, and it's not even like a ridiculously premium one. Do you know what I mean? It's available everywhere. Yeah. It's Precisely. A... This is a beautiful cigar, Alex. This is your first ever Oliva. What do you think? It's good. It's quite complex. It's got a, a sharp, of, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of different flavors. I think the complex and the flavor coming from the aging, it's, which yeah. probably later, slightly later, we're going to talk about that. Funny um, enough, we, we had a comment near the start. Mm. Um, someone said it doesn't like the Oliva G, it tastes very eggy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say I can taste egg in this one. <laughs> maybe that was an orange yeah, one. Eggy. If, if it had an eggy taste to it, eggy. I would have been fine, but it didn't. You know, it was I, just flat. It was I bland like, the whole I way. like to describe different tastes. I have, I, I, I'm, I think I have a very well uh, responsible palate and finding a weird taste. Is, but egg, eggy, that's something which, you know, the palate is something which we'll talk more in, in some of the future uh, shows, uh, shows, you know. Mm. I have a lot of talking about the palate and how you can... Uh, make your palate better and stuff, but let's not gonna be that topic today. Uh, I want you to maybe some people. I, I've seen some of the comments until I check in my phones. Uh, if some people say why you say new world, and the Cubans are still new world, so they are not old cigars or something. I think the reason is it's an identity. It's it's <clears throat> it's just um, semantics. That's all it is. It's not anything. It's just because people like to classify things, right? Sorry, give me, give me a second. Alex, do you mind just passing me that pillow? I'm feeling a bit old right now. <laughs> yeah, the, the, so, um, it's just semantics. It's just an identifying term that you use for a particular kind of cigar. So essentially, if any cigar wasn't produced in... Um, if, if there's a cigar that wasn't produced in Cuba, because Cuba's like the OG to some extent, you, you say that the, uh, the rest of the world are new world cigars. That's all it is. It's not... It's not yeah. to say that oh these are new cigars am, am and these I, are I, old cigars. I might clarify for some people if they yeah. know if they know that the term in New World where does it come from? You know uh, maybe most of the people know about it, but there will be people which don't know. So the New World uh, coming basically from the wine industry. You know when you when you have uh, wines, you know the old traditional wines they are made usually France, you know Germany, Spain, Italy. That's the old world of wines. Yeah. But like uh, years ago. When other countries discovered that uh, stuff to make in a wine, in a, in a recipe of the old uh, French wines and old European wines, like countries like Australia, uh, US, Argentina, whatever, God knows who else, who other countries making the wines in that days, in, in, in our days now. So they they start with the terminology New World yeah. wines. So that's how the cigars as well. So, you know, the Cuba start making cigars, I don't know, 1500 uh, something. They was making a cigar. So the, 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 yeah. Taino, the Taino people which bring the tobacco from... Do you know actually where the Cuban tobacco is coming from? Um, Cuban seed tobacco, where is it coming from? Oh, you told me. You told me. Um, Indonesia? No. Peru. Peru, sorry. Yeah. So basically, I was the Taino, way off there. How, the how, Taino how far Indians, was I? I thought it was Indonesia as well. The, the, <laughs> why did we think Indonesia? I'll tell you the Indonesia slightly later. The, the Tainus people are the mm. Indians which live in South America. Yeah. You know, in 4th century until up to the... Columbus going there, so they move from Brazil, from Peru. They move into the islands in Caribbean. You know the the, the Cuba, Dominican Republic, all the islands there. So they bring the tobacco with them, and they start growing the tobacco with them. Yeah. So the Cuban Cuban tobacco, the old Cuban tobacco, basically is a is a 
variety of the Peruvian tobacco. Yeah. Which grown in Cuba for many years and in, in, in ancient times and stuff like that. So the Cubans start making a, well, they, let's say they start making a decent cigars, probably early nine, early 1800. Mm. You know, some of the brands like Polo and Aga, they're, they're, they're 18, the oldest living Cuban brand, 1844, I believe is the date. So they were still producing the cigars yeah. from, from that time. And many of the cigars are producing on the same way. Polar, so they don't Polar use, and Yaga is the oldest yeah, brand. Yeah, which is, they, yeah. they still producing cigars of the same way. They don't use any machines, any stuff like that. So, yeah, they, they do, imp they implement stuff. Like yeah. they change the crop of the tobacco. They hybridize the tobacco. They made, so they made, the, they made the Corojo and Criollo, yeah. the traditional Cuban brands. One of them is a, a cross between the Indonesian tobacco and the Cuban tobacco grown in already there. So, so that's why I thought Indonesian. Yeah, many people okay. thought it's Indonesian. <clears throat> yes, uh, the the new, the 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 brand the tobacco we use now, you know, with the people using now, it's a cross between Indonesian tobacco and the uh, old Cuban seeds. But so the Cubans start, let's say, eighteen hundred ish. They Properly, start yeah. doing because they were making cigars. Way. They were yeah. making cigars across the period anyway. And, and, and in fact, the, the, the continent was making cigars because you had cigars from like the, from like the Mayan civilization. And well, <clears throat> the Spanish people basically... No, no, uh, before the Spaniards came there. Well, before that, there was a, the, the cigars was more uh, rituals. Yeah, you know, the exactly. Tain yeah. Tainus people, yeah. they have a, a, a behike mm. ritual, you know, a, a kuhiba ritual made by the behike. Behike is the shaman who make the ritual basically they they uh, believe the the human being made by uh, three ingredients mm. so uh, saliva uh, oh uh, tobacco and uh, semen that's Ma what the human mate is made if someone made a saliva and tobacco i might have to talk to them <laughs> so yeah so that's their believers you know they no, that came out wrong <laughs> and they they go in a spiritual trance smoking a tobacco and they believe that tobacco keep them well to heal you know they they even ask the gods for rain for stuff like that smoking a cigar that's how they start so i don't want to put that because we're smoking now for pleasure we don't yeah. Uh, relay on the cigars to keep us alive or something no. like that so let's say the cigars in our way start probably about 1800 before that yeah they've been moved to spain Sp spanish people moved them to europe from europe go to us or direct to the us you know other countries indonesia they grow their own tobacco some countries in africa also grow on tobacco and stuff like that so the 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 cigars we have now 1800 and uh, most of the countries start making a proper cigars like dr so the first factory in dominican republic is may is uh, around 1900 La, La Aurora, the company is still alive, still making a lot of cigars. Yeah. They start 1904, 1905. So that's a, about 100 years later after the Cubans. Yeah. So let's say it's a significant amount of time. So Cubans have 100 years before that. Yeah. Uh, slightly before that in US, you know, <coughs> Tampa and Ivor City, they start, they've been like the boom of the cigars in late 1800s. Mm. They're making cigars. Nicaragua coming on the map maybe about 40, 50 years later. Hoya de Nicaragua is one of the oldest company making cigars. You can yeah. see how light, slate, lightly down, you know, uh, soon and rather not that old cigars you have in some of that uh, countries. You know, Mexico as well start making cigars. And people just wants to separate that. Cuba, we all know Cuba, the first one, and, and they will be the first country which be well known for making a proper premium cigars. Yeah. That's why they stay as an old world of Cubans. Yes. It's, it's not wrong to say old world. No, not many people use it, but it's still right, relevant, you know, yeah. say old world and the new world. Precisely, because there's a huge gap. Like you said, there's a hundred year gap between. Yeah, I'm when... not seeing that no one doing cigars between that, mm. but it's not. It's, it's a... more like a, on, on, a, on, a, on a larger scale. Yeah. On with with the aim to supply. <clears throat> because you know, lots of people have been producing cigars, but this is this is a different kettle of fish. People live in the game. cigars, you know, there's a, there's a generation growing tobacco and smoking for their own was a part of their life uh, back in the time, but they didn't produce premium stuff cigars. Mm. So, yeah. There's another point I wanted to talk about. So this is something that irks me a little bit. And that is um, when people talk about construction issues in Cuban cigars. And now I'm not saying that Cuban cigars don't have their construction problems. Because of course they do. But they make it out like New World cigars 
don't have construction issues. So here's the thing. Plug cigars, uh, plug cigars, loose drawing cigars, badly constructed, badly burning, those kind of things. That's not a trait of Cuban cigars. That's a trait of cigars in general, across the board. Every single, almost every single cigar brand that you can think of will probably have some issues with construction. That is a given because it's a natural product. These issues are gonna come up. The exceptions are a few brands, very few brands that are the exception to that rule. So this, the construction argument is, oh, Cuban cigars are always badly constructed. I'd rather have this, that, and whatever. But it's like, no, cigars in general will have, occasionally, have issues with construction. It's just, it's just part of the territory. That's just what it is. Why do you think uh, a lot of people complaining about the Cuban draws and so, not the new world ones? So, I have an answer. <clears throat> Let me hear it first. This is, what I've, this is what I found out. Now, I don't know if this has been verified in any way, shape, or form. But this is what I've been finding out based on some of the discussions I've been having, based on some of the, you know, just, you know, reading up on a couple of things. But what tends to happen is if you have, so the U.S. is the biggest market. For New World, yes. Yeah. Well, it's the biggest market for cigars in general. It's huge, right? Not for Cubans. Not for Cubans, but cigars. If we're looking at even... Yeah, it's biggest because, you know, Cuba made, what, 120 million cigars a year. Only Drew Estate make probably the same amount. Mm. So yeah, compared to that, it's... Cuban is like small fry when it comes to the actual amount of cigars that have been produced. Um, they're not small fry in terms of popularity, but in terms of like uh, the number that's coming out from... It's a small country, I mean, you know, how much can you produce, right? But you have like this idea being perpetuated regularly from like US... From the US side and... You know they're saying, you know, if you keep saying the same thing over and over again, eventually people will believe it, right? If you say, if you repeat the same thing consistently, people will believe it. And what happens is, if you keep saying, oh, Cuban cigars are badly constructed, then every time you smoke a Cuban cigar that is badly constructed, it registers. It registers hard. But every time you smoke a New World cigar that's badly constructed, it doesn't register in the same way. It's kind of like when you're out... But how often did you smoke a... But I've had I've had a lot of bad uh, cons bad on the, on, on the I've had completely plugged Oliva cigars, completely plugged Oliva cigars regularly. I don't I don't have a problem with that. I mean I do have a problem, but I don't like make a huge scene about it. I don't particularly care too much. It's just you know, it's just by the by. It's just one of the things about cigars. It's, well, it's because the New World cigars. But let me finish. Them, or, yeah, finish. But let me finish. finish your sentence. I've had completely plugged. Uh, Oliva cigars. The last few Davidoff cigars that Alex and I smoked. Alex, what was the draw like on that one? Completely loose. Right? Now, Davidoff has some of the best uh, quality control. And I will seven attest to that. I will, stage I will attest to that. But the last few Davidoff cigars that we smoked, they had like a, an extremely loose draw. It was uncomfortably loose. Yeah. It was just, there was no, no joy. Yeah. It was just no joy in smoking those cigars. I've had Placencia cigars that have been plugged, like the Alma Fuerte Salomon. I've had, a, I've had a bunch of them which have been plugged. I've had a bunch of them which have been underfilled. I've had, um, I think the only, the only cigars, but then I haven't smoked a lot of them because they're, they're, they're quite pricey. The only cigars that I haven't had any issues with ever is Padron, but I haven't smoked a great deal of them. I'll tell you something about Padron. In, in a, Even in Fuente. Way. Fuente, same, similar issues. More, Fuente is more of a, a underfilled cigars. La Flor Dominicana, similar kind of vibe. Bad burn. Um, uh, 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 bad burn and do, not, not, not a great draw. Or very tough draw. Do you think that could be up to the how you store your cigars? But you can't. You know, I, I'll tell you why I'm asking. You know, last time when I have plucked Cuban cigar. <clears throat> in the last... I smoke, you know, I'll say I smoke decent smoke. I'm a decent smoker for close to 10 years. I have only one plucked Cuban cigar. I only have, one. I've only, had, I've only had one ever plugged Cuban cigar as well so far. Yeah, so I, <laughs> if I need to, I, did, I don't smoke every day Cubans now, but back five years ago, I smoke every, every day. I smoke only Cuban cigars. Yeah. But I sm you know me, I don't smoke a new... A new, uh, new Cuban cigars. Yeah, I think we have a comment or something. Which one? Carry on. Oh. Yeah. So, 
my all my Cuban cigars, or most of them, you know, they're at least five, six years old. Yeah. I sli- I tend to keep my cigars slightly drier than usual. So I, yeah. I store my cigars between 62 and 63, something like that. Some of them even on 61. I don't have any problems with, you know, bugs or, or, or even humidity or stuff like that. But I think the cigars come in a little bit drier. The leaves are drier and they don't plug the cigar. You know, if you have more humidity, you expand the leaves and sometimes the leaf plug if, or even if they're not raw, you know, mm. the other explanation, if they're not raw well. We're going to get and to that because there is, there is a discussion the, about what humidity Cuban uh, cigars should be kept at. So we are going to discuss that. Cuba. But, yeah, so go on, on, Alex. Well, there's, uh, there's some good comments sort of pertaining to all of this, basically. Okay. Um, so I, I should probably put them to you. Um, there, there was a comment from D, D. Collier. don't know your first name, D, but we'll call you D now. Um, Hello, D. Hello, D. <laughs> um, wondering, basically... He's not the only one, but there's, there's also um, basically saying about how you know the embargo for the US affect, potentially affects the quality of Cuban cigars. Potentially, if it's lifted, maybe it will go up or down depending on investment levels or sellout levels, perhaps. Um, and I, I, I don't related, s- related to that as to whether or not the that new world market is driven too much by the US. Well, uh, quality control. I don't think I quality don't could... think it's because of the embargo. No, because you if... know the the problem with Cuban cigars, most of the problems with the quality is because they don't have the quality control. Mm. So they have uh, they don't use draw machines. No, you know the draw machine is a device. It's a machine, but basically it's a device. Every cigar when it's rolled, they test it for a draw. It yeah. to be a particular uh, amount of draw, you know, good or bad or something like that. So every single brand, as far as I know, in the new world still uh, were cigars using draw machine. A part of one brand. What? Padron. They really? Use. But everyone say the best rollers in the industry are in Padron. I've never had a bad Padron, but I so, haven't smoked a lot of Padron. So I mean, they I don't use it. drawing machine. They're old fashioned still. They're not big as the others. Padron make seven, eight million cigars a year. Yeah. So they don't make 40 million or 50 million of some of the bigger companies. They have to have less problems potentially you know even david will have way more cigars producing uh, and stuff like that fuente it's a bigger company yeah you yeah. know bigger amount of cigars produced there's a bigger risk to have plugged cigars of course padron producing seven eight million cigars a year which is not that much but padron they don't use drawing machine they just have the rollers which you know and also the other the other problem uh in cuba if you roll in cigars if you're a torcedor or, or bonchero the guys who roll in cigars yeah yeah you even if you roll bad batch of cigars, they don't roll, nothing happened. What's happened in Nicaragua, if you roll in a today 100 cigars and they try five of them and say, they're shit. What's happened? You're not going to get paid today. Interesting. That's not happened in Cuba. They, they all go, it's a c- communist country. Mm. They have their salary. Yeah. They go there. Doesn't matter how many cigars they roll. Doesn't matter what's the quality. Just pump them out. Pump them out. In Nicaragua, in the Dominican Republic, mm. in uh, Mexico, in Honduras, People are paid every day on the quality. Mm. So if someone, some roller, make a mistake with five, even two or three cigars, he didn't get paid today. Mm. That's why they care a little bit more. Yeah. Even the rollers, you know, they're not the guys who's doing the quality control. They're not the guys who's doing the drawing test and stuff. They're just Bonchero and Rolero, the two people which roll in the cigar. And they care because they don't want to be unpaid today. Mm. Nobody wants to work for free all day. Of course. So that's one of the points which probably causing that. That could be that could be one of the you know they, they, that could be an issue. But in terms of like this, when I'm not trying to suggest, I I don't know which ones are better. I'm going to be honest. I don't know which cigars are better when it comes to construction. I just don't. I know that Padron. I've never had a problem with them. I know that Davidoff have great construction in general. I know that with Cubans, a bad burn. I don't particularly care uh, in terms of bad draw. I've had very few. I've had um, I've had one completely plugged cigar ever, which is Cuban, and then that was in store, so they just gave me another one. Yeah, I was I was as well on the event, and my cigar was plugged, so they've got another one. That was the only one. I that was the only time. Like, yeah, that's yeah. the only time that's happened to me, and they just gave me another one, which is which is fine. But this, <clears throat> when people try and if you're using one or two brands reputation for extremely high quality uh, construction as a way to generalize the whole new world batch of cigars. I think that's a stretch because badly constructed cigars are found everywhere. 
It doesn't matter whether they're from Cuba, it doesn't matter whether they're from Nicaragua or Honduras or, or India, I mean, in all fairness. Bad, bad construction is an issue for everyone. There are, there are going to be measures that people put in place or companies put in place to try and minimize that as much as possible, but it's not perfect. And these issues will come up. It's just one of those things. So to try and use the idea of bad construction as a, as a feature of Cuban cigars, I think that's not only false, but it, it's, it's unfair, but it's also, it's, it's also kind of false because it's, it's not really, it's, it's a feature of cigars in general as opposed to a feature of one particular brand. There's a good point from Joey Chatterjee here. Hopefully I'll count that. Hey, up, Joey. Hey, how you doing? Uh, Joey said that you're going to talk about Cubans. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Joey, don't be mean. <laughs> yeah, I mean. It's basically a pretty common sense point, but it'd be a shame to pay a lot for a Mojito and get a bad draw, right? No, that's fair. But a lot of retailers, what they tend to do is if you buy a um, UK retailer, I don't know about... Maybe I shouldn't yeah, say. I, I never, I never knew a guy who smoked Bihiki and complained about the draw. To be no, honest. no. But the point is that, as in, but but the, but the Bihiki is, but you could say, is the could, premium of the premium. You know, it would be a shame to pay a lot for any cigar. But you could say the same thing about Padron, or you could say the same thing about Gurkha, or anyone really. You There's could a say, which is more expensive than Bihiki. Uh, Oro release and Oro, Oro no, Blanco. No, Oro, Blanco. Oro Blanco is more expensive than Bihiki. By times. a lot, by a lot. So imagine if you smoke Oro Blanco, it, it's crap. <laughs> so <laughs> I've got Royal releases that are about half the price of the uh, 54. Is it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's a fair point. I don't know. They're actually, don't buy it you know, also. when it comes to like super premium, they're actually reasonably priced in a weird way. Especially considering that's a UK price, 85 pounds for the Royal release robusto. That's not I bad. I get that. If it's, it's, it's bad if you buy a hundred pound or. Something with that cigar and the cigar will be awful or or, or, draw, or don't have draw. Yeah. But I, I never seen that problem with the legit Bihikis. You no. know, if you buy from a legit If you store, buy if you, you buy know, the super premium one cigars, one. yeah. I never seen someone complaining about the draw on the Bihike. Mm. Yeah, people complaining uh probably the most expensive cigars I've seen complaining uh I don't I know even limited editions. They're like uh Monte something, uh like some Churchills and stuff, but not of not Churchill wide is quite prominent with a lot of people that complain yeah but that's not the premium one you know that's a, just a cuban that's what cigar, 23 24 pounds yeah. yeah so I, i'm not seeing anyone complaining of uh, talismans mm. uh, supremos uh, lcdh cigars uh, which you know they have more aging in there they have more uh, care they have, about them they They're do tend to have more um, experienced people the thing i've found about cuban cigars and really premium ones is they do have a firmer draw so like this draw this is a little bit on the firm end, but I like that because I like the fact that there's a little bit of resistance and I'm having to work at it Yeah. Same. because there's a couple of reasons. One, when you have a very um, loose draw, it tastes horrible. You can't do anything about it. You can't fix it. You know, you can't put more tobacco in, can you? And also, Alex, it's just uncomfortable smoking. It's just like you can't, you can't draw properly. You've got to breathe in. Yeah. It's like... It's like, yeah, I don't have, I don't like loose draw as well. That's the you worst. Know, loose draw is, a, it for me, is worst, yeah. Yeah. So I would rather have a plug cigar cigars, than a loose draw. I, I have a great example of people which know me personally, which we smoke in usually online now because we can't meet. Uh, know that I rave about a specific cigar a few times this year. It's a Rocky Patel uh, ALR cigar. And oh, I smoked three mm. for the last four or five months i thought you'd all three small have been from different countries even purchased so i have one from us one from england one from germany so they are completely different batches no chance to be same box or something all of them looking nice on touch on feel everything you start you lit the cigar literally 10 puffs into the cigar cigar becomes soft as a wet tissue and you you can't feel anything no oh, i hate that so how that maybe they, how, the 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 people who roll the cigars didn't do the job right? You know the cigar look all right. The funny thing is when you smoke that much, about inch less than inch, is it just underfilled? Come, yeah, underfilled. Oh, I hate that. So they have the full leaf there. Maybe the <laughs> you know in some point the leaf one of the leaves being short. Yeah, and you have awful cigar and, and that's destroyed the blend destroyed the taste you know completely destroys the flavor yeah because you're missing probably one of the leaves so exactly. you've got the different blend now mm. all the blends are need to be blended together you know if you 
if you if you miss one of the blend, you know it's a, this is a great experiment. Someone will want to try if you smoke a cigar and the cigar become very bitter and not tasty. What you can do? Get the knife, cut the cigar white, and basically take all the leaves, separate all the leaves, and smoke every leaf separately, and see who's the bad leaf in there. You can find exactly which leaf causing the problems. Oof. So you can smoke. You can just smoke every single leaf separate. Yeah. And you see, oh, that's the awful leaf. That's what causing the problems. So yeah, it's a. Uh... So this 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 notion that construction problems are just rife in Cuba, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced at all. I think it's just one of those. Um... I think it's up to the cigars how they've been stored. The that play, that plays a major For part. Me, personally, yeah. I don't want to influence anyone with that opinion. But my experience is how the cigars being stored, not only in the personal humidor, mm. also into the shop's humidor. But as, and even the, that, the aside, that aside, that aside, because that that factor is is universal, right? That's a universal factor with every cigar. How you store them will impact how they smoke, to some extent. And so, but we're talking about construction from the source, and I think <clears throat> this idea that only Cuban cigars or Cuban cigars have this problem with construction. Yeah, they may not have the, um, the, the best quality control, but they've been producing cigars for hundreds of years. I think they know what they're doing by now. Yeah, yes and no. I, I'm always a guy which say yes and no. You know? I, I <laughs> say yes and no because they produce cigars for many years, but uh, literally the, all the decent people making cigars in Cuba, they run out from Cuba. Mm. They run away. You can mention most of the New World brands, they start by Cuban guys. The That's very true. Cubans. That's very the true. So the, some of the decent rollers go in US, start rolling cigars in Tampa. Some of them go in, uh, you know, Great Cliff Cigars is a great yeah. example. So Avelino Lara is the guy which uh, basically invent, uh, create Bejique, uh, no Bejique, Cuhiba. Mm. He's one of the main guys creating the lastest blends of, of Cuhiba yeah. 20, 30 years ago. So he, in some point, he leave Cuba, going in Bahamas. And create the uh, help to the uh, guy in Bahamas, which created the brand called Grey Cliff. I've heard of that. Yeah, I Grey Cliff them, cigars though. are basically made by Avery Lara. The guy passed away a few years ago, but he 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 gave a new life to that brand. It, maybe before that was a just local brand in Bahamas. That's it. The guy going there, start blending cigars, and that brand is a coffee series. So it's, it's a big Grey Cliff coffee. That's what it's called. It's amazing cigar, and it's like fifteen dollars. Some people say it's better than Bahike. But it's fifteen dollars here. <laughs> that's the question. Well, it's it's not available in Europe as oh, far as I know. Shame. It's it's a cigar only available in US. But yeah, uh, it's a great ex another. It's a many examples. I can give you a lot of them. The uh, one of the rollers, personal rollers of Castro, Maria. I forgot her surname. Mm. She go, she go in Tampa. She rolls cigars for La. Uh, what is it called the brand La Palina. Yeah. No, I know. I I read about that. I read about that. Yes. Yeah, once Castro stopped uh, smoking cigars, she left. She, she left. Yeah. So and no, that's just some of the famous people. No, but you you told me about that, and then I read up on that. Yeah, I, I distinctly so remember. Many the... many people. Man. I can st if I can start naming people run out from Cuba. Don Pepin, uh, Quesada, Manolo mm -hmm. Quesada. They are all Cubans. Mm -hmm. uh, even pa Padron family, Fuente, hundred years ago, being Cuban and mm -hmm. ancestry. So. All of them basically run out from Cuba yeah. with the great ideas. Even Jamaican tobacco start with Cuban guys and they, they move the tobacco back into the other countries and they mm. give their knowledge, their, their expertise and but how this to is, make the cigars. But this is precisely why so many new world brands are such great, make, are producing such incredible cigars. I know that I prefer Cuban cigars, but I don't believe that new world cigars you prefer are inferior. cuban cigars because of the taste yeah but that so. doesn't mean that i think that new world cigars are inferior by any means i'm a big fan of new world cigars i'm a big fan of davidoff i like davidoff they're pricey everywhere <laughs> but i like them i i love padron i like oliva some oliva not all of them um Toro Fuente, I, I, I haven't really got on with them that well. I'm not going to lie. You know, I've tried the, uh, I've, I've tried a couple of the Opus X. Maybe I tried the wrong ones. You mentioned ones. Davidoff. Why do you think Davidoff ran out from Cuba? Oh, quality control. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? Yes. So that's, let's say there is no official But version. then, but here's the thing though. Here's There's the a thing, few though. rumors. But here's the thing though. There's a, that's, that's the thing. I think that people are using 
Davidoff's extreme um, need for perfection as a as a way to uh, generalize New World cigars. That's not specific to New World cigars. That's specific to Davidoff. Uh, quality control, yes. No, no, no. He, no, no, no. But, but, but Davidoff's quality control isn't normal. It's weirdly freaking eccentrically. No, no, I mean, yeah, they, at the moment they have one in, of the biggest quality controls, yeah. like seven stages quality control. They're in think. like the upper echelon of quality control. Yeah, but when Zino Davidoff left Cuba, you know, most of the people say it's a quality control issues and stuff. Why then one of the most collectible cigars are Cuban Davidoffs? If, if there's a known issue for them, that's why they left, you know, you know and, and I have... Uh, but it wasn't, it wasn't just... But I have four different boxes of Cuban Davidoffs. But the thing is, sorry for interrupting though. They have a problem. But so, sorry for interrupting, but they, it isn't just quality control. I mean, okay, fine. There, were, there may have been some issues with quality control because he burnt like a, what, hundreds of thousands of cigars in public. But that wasn't the major issue that caused the, caused the rift, was it? The major issue was the, um, was the interfering nature of uh, the Cuban government at the time. They were, they were trying to demand so much more from him. And yeah. that was the tipping point. I don't, I don't entirely, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure about that because basically the Cuban government created the Daridov. Yeah, they yeah. helped work with him. So they, it might be that, it, there is no official version. Yeah. Let's say it that way. But there was a lot of, there was a lot, yeah, that's true. I have true. been talking with, uh, you know, I've been <clears> on a Zoom with uh, uh, Klaus Kellner, which is uh, the son of Heinke Kellner of Davidoff. Mm. And there was a exact same question. Why does, you know, Davidoff left Cuba? He say, let's say that most official version is a quality control. He say it's not uh, confirmed by anyone from the government, but that's the most official rumor. Why is, you know, going Dominican Republic and, you know, but one of the one of the factors, I mean, I guess they can't say it because they want to keep you know relationships relatively fine or whatever, or they want to keep. Well, things, if you're not part they want to keep of that civil. inside ring, you're not gonna know this. The, no. you know, we are just very far away from. We the, are very far. We're speculating we're heavily. As the consumers, moment. we have our opinions. We want to think what we tell yeah. you. So speaking of consumers, um, Amir Tabesh, hopefully I'll pronounce that correctly again. I'm here. Um, so just a question, basically. Going slightly off track here, but a, a question for a new smoker. Essentially, just you know, quickly, what? Why does humidity affect it? I guess in some ways, but also just you know, how is the best way to store your cigars? And, and uh, you know, for a for a new smoker, they think it's important. And you know, as a relatively new smoker myself, Ray, I'll let you catch uh, that one. So, uh, as many stuff in the cigars, I think there is no strict rules. I believe there is no strict rules. A lot of people say, ideally, 69 by 69, you know, 69 uh, humidity, 69 uh, Fahrenheit. As I know people saying 70 by 70, you know, 70 uh, degree. Uh, it's which up is to about, Which is about 20 I, I degrees Celsius. Say, if, if you're a new smoker, I would say, uh, set up your humidor for, let's say, 69. Yeah. Smoke 5, 10, 20 cigars. See how you're feeling about the construction, about the taste. You know, some people like salt cigar. Lawrence Davis from Salter. I, I think I've been on a few chats with him and he smoke he keeps his cigars over 80 sometimes. So they soaked. So it's up to the personal preference. You know, if you like more smoke and stuff, you know, if their cigars are a little bit drier, they tend to smoke, have more smoke. And uh, some of the taste is for me coming on when the cigar, but I'm a big fan of the vintage stuff. So they're slightly more drier. Usually the vintage cigars, the old cigars, they're drier. Yeah. And I am, I'm fan of that. I keep my cigars, as I mentioned, 61 up to 64 maximum. I keep. I don't about... keep cigars over 64. Yeah, I experiment. I have a small humidor where it's a 70 something. I just want to see if I, as I say, if I want to, if I like them more, I will probably put them more humidity. But uh, there is no strict rules. Usually between 62 and 65 for the Cubans, what the people say, and 65 to 69 for New World. But I don't separate my cigars as well. No. I keep them in the same place. Personally, I th I think for the beginner. The advice that I would offer would be keep your cigars around 67 just to start off and then work your way up or down. Yeah, try, try all the combination, you know, because the, so, the bigger problem with the humidification, over humidification, you know, you know if, it's, if the cigars are very dry, you might have a beetles, cigar beetles, maybe if they have the larvas and stuff, maybe not. If the cigars are very humid, you might have a mold. 
you know that's the the bigger problem but if uh, uh you know to have a mold you need way more than 70 72 you know you need like way more and uh, the problem with the humidification because the process of the when the cigars are made it's uh, fermentation is the most important thing what's the fermentation basically the fermentation is to remove the water from the leaf mm -hmm. so they they do few fermentation process so they get reduced the, the water way significantly up to the six eight nine percent of water then they humidify it again the cigars they remove the water again and they when they roll them they humidify them again because you can't throw bone dry leaf you know no that, you gotta you gotta you have a lot be, of flexibility yeah. in the leaf. and then the cigars going again to be removed the water and uh, usually the percentage of water in the what we're smoking at the moment is supposed to be around 12 uh, percent water into the leaves 12 15 percent yeah internally and, yeah so if you keep the cigars more humidity you have more uh, percentage of water in the leaf you might have burn issues you might have uh, some tastes which are not pleasant you know if especially if the cigars never been on the dry condition uh, you might have a uh, acids you might have a uh, uh, unpleasant uh, taste of uh, you know raw tobacco which is not nice and even even my advice is something slightly off topic when you smoke cigar, I know some people, especially if you're a new smoker, they smoke half of the cigar, they cut the cigar and keep it in the humidor for mm. tomorrow. So why it's not a good idea? Because when you smoke cigar, now I'm smoking a cigar, I can feel the end is slightly soft. It's not because it's hot, it's because my saliva going into the leaf. Yeah. And they humidify the leaf and completely change the taste of the leaf. And if you smoke a cigar, you cut it, and leave it cigar for three, four, five hours, or next day smoke again. That leaf is already humidified. Mm. You can't dry that leaf for twenty-four hours or three days. Mm. You need way more time to, uh, you know, remove the humidity in there, excess humidity from your saliva. Of course. So that's why it's not a good idea to over humidify cigars. So lead them into, you know, keep them in, in your humidor half smoked or something like that. Despite the smell of the uh, mm. charcoals and stuff. Also, there's another. If I carry on, I know a lot of people watching a YouTube or people tipping the top of the cigar into the brandy or whiskey or something like that, wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong because you do the same thing. You humidify the leaf mm. and you completely destroy the blend. Yes. You might you might feel the taste of rum when you smoke, yeah, or whiskey. You know, say I like the taste of whiskey when I sip it on the glass and drink separately. Why I need to tip your cigar into the whiskey? No. It's you humidify the leaves and you damage the, the, the construction. It's can not I, the same. Can I just add, when it comes to um, storing cigars, a lot of people focus predominantly on the humidity, which is good. You should be focusing on the humidity because it's a very important factor. But the temperature is equally, if not slightly more important. Because when you start pushing up that temperature, that's when you have a risk of uh, cigar beetles because they need a warmer temperature. And at those warmer temperatures, there's a greater chance that any dormant eggs lying in sick, because most cigars have them, they may start to hatch. The other thing is, when you increase the temperature, the humidity inside the cigars and in the humidor will start changing drastically, very quickly, because water's quite volatile, right? I mean, it evaporates just outside, you know? It's, uh... so, so getting us back on track to the whole New World versus Cuban thing. Um, somebody. Let me, before before you go in there, I want yeah. just to add some information for someone might find it helpful. Yeah. Uh, there's a guy which makes specialized in the humidors, handmade humidors. He have a channel in YouTube. He have a, you can find him in the internet. It's called Mark Andre. It's a German maker. The guy is very, very well known, specialized about the solutions in the humidor, how you need to put your humidificator. If you have X amount of cigar, if it's a box, that big box, you buy the tube humidifier, which you're not going to touch some cigars in some way. So if someone wants to know, find the guy, it's called Mark Andre, or if you, if you can't remember the name, text me after that, I'll tell you exactly uh, the stuff. It's a German maker. I'm pretty sure you can find him in Instagram, YouTube, whatever. You can ask him a question. He'll be more than happy to answer. It's a decent guy. And you have a probably the biggest knowledge about how to put the cigars into the humidor and how to fix uh, all kinds of solutions about humidification in a small 20 count humidor in a 500 count humidor in a room of humidor you know yeah he, he, well, he he's can, very helpful well, he obviously has a, an incredible amount of experience and expertise in that particular area he, ex exper he yeah. experiment a lot so he's he, he's he, but he's the kind of guy who um who would understand how to make large fit humidors as well as just 
small tabletop humidors. So, yeah, I think, you know, getting information and knowledge from someone like that. Go on the question, Alex. So, I mean, that links in. So, uh, uh, Alan Curtis, our friend from last week, who kept us going morally. Um, Thank you, Alan. Uh, <laughs> um, he was saying, you know, just basically saying about, and this, this is something you do as well, Ray, about how humidity might be, you know, there might be different humidity requirements for New York versus Cubans, but a lot of retailers effectively will store them in the same. I store them in the same. Personally, you know, I, I store all my cigars. I don't separate them. Yeah, I have a small humidor which I, I want to do experiments, but I, they also have some amount of Cuban, some amount of New World. And for me, it's uh, all cigars, all my cigars. I'm happy with my condition, as I say, 62, 64. I'm perfectly fine with that. I don't find the uh, difference in into the quality of the Cubans and New Worlds if I put them, you know, I don't like them more humidified than that. Let's say that way. Cigar retailers in general, across the board, they tend to have their cigars at a slightly uh, greater humidity just because they appreciate that a lot of their cigars are being shipped yes. in the post. Yes. So they will slightly over humidify, not by a great deal, but just enough that there's very little to no risk of the cigars having any dry issues when they arrive. Because... And, and that's one of the reasons why you need to rest your cigars as well, because you need to have it acclimate to your own personal preferences. So when you purchase a cigar from a particular retailer, one, they're not going to be acclimated to your personal preferences. They're going to be a general kind of, they're going to be produced or stored in a general manner. Yeah, a lot, and, of, people, and a lot of people say when you buy a cigar from a store, at least smoke it at least if you have time on the next day. Mm. Because cigar need to acclimatize, as you say, from the traveling and stuff. If you buy a cigar from a uh, abroad, from uh, you know, which been probably traveled by plane and stuff, give it a week, give it more than that. I would so, say about two weeks if it's traveled yeah, for more. You need than... to give it time to cigar yeah. to acclimatize. Don't straight away. I know sometimes people are impatient when they receive a box of new cigars. They want to smoke them so badly, and they they just you know. But this open is this them. is what I do though. This is what I do. Um, and because this is just part of like, you know, learning more about these cigars and whatever. Whenever I purchase a cigar from a, a box of cigars from abroad, as soon as they arrive, I will smoke one. And then that will taste generally horrible. But then what I tend to do is I leave them. I might smoke one about a few days later just to see how they're progressing. And then I leave it for another couple of weeks and then I smoke another one. That's and a I kind find... of experiment. Yeah. You know, I also do that sometimes mm. when I arrive but something... I... Try, but, try that one. It's a yeah. worth and try, you know. But I do that for um, a wide range of different cigar types, Vitolas. And, and the reason for that is because I, I want to kind of build a picture in my mind to see what kind of cigars tend to acclimate faster, what, ta what kind of cigars tend to kind of rest quicker, rest slower, and so on. And, you know, it might seem obvious, but obvious, well, it is obvious. I mean, larger cigars are going to take a longer period of time to acclimate correctly versus thinner ring gauge cigars so if you have lanceros not saying that you shouldn't rest lanceros because you obviously do need to but they may not necessarily require as much time as let's say uh, a double corona or something like you know something with a much thicker ring gauge it's something which i never try to be honest to separate them on the ring gauges and see if they acclimatize you know they're ready to smoke straight away or something which is uh yeah, maybe worth an experiment, but uh... it's not. It's not a rule or something. There's no like specific rule that this cigar needs this much time to acclimate because there's so many different variables that you you can't really tell. And a lot of the variables are, you know, how did the how did the retailer uh, store the cigars? And you, it's it's difficult to know. It's difficult to know how the retailer store the cigars. Generally speaking, retailers will store their cigars very well, but then it also depends on your own preferences, how you like your cigars. Uh, whether you like them to be a little uh, more humid or less humid, if you prefer X or Y, you know, there are lots of different factors that uh, fall into, you know, come into account and th there isn't a particular rule. But anyway, I think we'll, we'll talk about, you know, cigars and managing cigars and so on. I think that might be a, a, another separate video that we can talk about it in more detail. But in this video, let's, let's focus, let's go back to um, talking about Cubans versus New Worlds because... I think this is a subject which is an interesting subject for me and 
there's there have been some battle lines drawn in some instances on some occasions and i think that it's a subject that i enjoy talking about i do it's it's a fun subject to talk about if you're with people that enjoy both because what you don't want to do is you don't want to create sides between new world and cuban cigars because it's it's a silly it's a silly thing to do it's it's a false comparison or a I might be getting this wrong. Well, I'll tell you what, there's, a, there's something which you actually said you talked about last week, so you better do it. Go on. Which Joey Chatterjee has just brought up. Which cigars age better? Or, um, we want to talk about different. that as a, as a particular subject. So we want to I discuss can, that. I can mention a few we can, we can mention a few things, but there which, is a... Uh, it's a still comparison between New World and uh, in, uh, in, uh, Cuban. Uh, which cigar age better? Definitely Cubans. 100%. I, I have I, many... I Many Cubans, because the... Without a doubt, without a doubt. The Cubans tend to have uh, uh, s less aging when they produce them. And they specifically, some of the cigars are made purely to be aged. You know, like they have the maduration process, second maduration process, which come in after 10 years. Mm. Uh, it's a great example with that cigar, which I'm going to smoke now. In fact, I'm going to quickly mention a couple of points about that. Um, so... One of the questions that someone asked in uh, on the post on the channel was, uh, and it was a really good question, I thought. <clears throat> uh, they asked, you know, New World cigars generally have a fermentation and curing process, which is uh, about a year, year and a half, whereas Cuban cigars are only for a few months. So I actually post, I actually posed this question directly to um, Hunters and Franco, and I also posed this question to Habanos themselves. So I, I directly spoke to Habanos about this. And the answer that I got was, well, there's no particular, uh, there's no specific curing process. There's no time frame for all cigars. What they tend to do is it depends. So it depends on the brand of cigar. It depends on the Vitola. It depends, not the Vitola, sorry. It depends on the brand of cigar. Because they have different, they have particular farms or particular locations for particular brands of cigars, right? So... Certain cigars, more premium cigars, will generally be cured and, and fermented for a much longer period, potentially even longer than uh, a year, a year and a half. And um, less expensive cigars may not necessarily have that long of a fermentation period. Now, that, that makes sense to me because it's kind of like aging anything, really, isn't it? I mean, if, you, if you're aging something, then it's going to increase the cost. And because, as, you, as we talked about last, year, last week, when you have a process of aging by in, in in any way stock is just sat there not making any money it's costing you money by having that so that's going to add to some degree of premium or you know it's going to increase the cost to some extent so there's no set rule there's no like okay all tobacco everywhere is going to be fermented and cured for this period of time it it depends on the brand that they're discussing yeah, if uh, I, I don't think <clears throat> people buy, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't think people buy New World cigars with the idea to be aged. You know, I have some old ones. I have even cigar with, in me, which is made in 1970s, and it's a New World Joya de Nicaragua, uh, which is uh, I smoke some of them. They lose a lot of the potential. They lose a lot of the power. You know, <clears throat> what's the point to buy a Maduro cigar, strong cigar, and keep it to aging for 10 years? You know, I'm not I'm talking for a new world. Cigar. Yeah. So yeah, you, you yeah. buy, I don't know, LFD. You buy LFD, which tend to be very strong cigars. You keep them for 10 years. So they lose almost all of the, the strength. I have a LFD double hero. I have a Airbender, which are both 2013, 2014. They're amazingly tasty, but they don't have any power. So some pe why you're going to buy a LFD if you don't want the power of LFD? You know, LFD is very... Uh, uh, very specific for the their strength, and people buy them because of that. So, I don't think it's. Have you finished your cigar, Alex? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a great idea to try experiment, but don't buy new world cigars. We tend to age them. You can yeah, age them. Collectible. Think... You you might buy them because they are rare and collectible, but to be to smoke them aged, Cubans are way more uh, in, made for that. You yeah. know, they they develop way more after some years. That is a 2013. As I mentioned in the beginning, Roman and Juliet, I, I smoke 
half of the box when I bought them in the first few months. It was awful taste wise. Mm. Awful. I don't like it. Bitter. You know, they like green leaves tasting. <laughs> and I say, no, I'm not going to leave it. I'm not going to touch it soon. Put them in the bottom in the humidor, open the box a few months, month, yeah, a few months ago, around New Year. Amazing taste. Construction, I'm not going to, you will see how that's going to burn. I can guarantee that will burn decent. And still, that's very creamy, very, what I want from Cuban cigar. No, not much of a strength. Slight pepper kick in the first few puffs. They're gone now. And the cigar will go smooth like cream, you know what I mean? Creaminess. That's one of the specific tastes on the Cuban cigars if they're decent. That creaminess. They don't have the hash yeah. of the of the, the the some of the uh, the blend the tobaccos made, you know, Connecticut, the 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 hash of the Brazilian tobacco, which is sweet but very strong. The Mexican uh, you know pepperness on the San Andreas. They don't have that one. They have their creaminess, they have what they're supposed to have. If the cigar tastes acidity, you know, tastes bitter. It's something wrong. Leave it to leave it in, in in the humidor and touch them in a few years at least. Not now. What I found is, um, <clears throat> and this is this has not been verified, but this is based on a couple of discussions that I had. Um, Romeo and Julieta cigars tend not to have. Some Romeo and Julieta cigars tend not to have as much, <clears throat> in terms of the initial aging or fermentation process, as Monte Cristo, uh, and Cohiba, or, or even Partigas to some extent. But Monte Cristo is the most famous brand out of Havana. Uh, out of um, Havana. No, I don't think so. The, uh, no, the that's famous. A, that's a, to say which is the more famous, that's a cliche, you know. Is it? Yeah, there's a, there's a, they have their this main is, this is, But this is something that I've heard from a lot of major retailers as well. They say that the Monte Cristo is the most famous brand. Well, we all know how the church will have the name on the Vitola. Yeah. So why Monte Cristo don't have that Vitola? They do have, mm, yeah, that's true. So if they're most famous, you know, you have, they, they, they have their main brands, you know, Cohiba, Hoyu, uh, A. Chapman, Monte Cristo, Romeo and Juliet. And they have their secondary, brand, secondary brands, their third and, and some of the machine made and then the extinct brands. Yeah. So, yeah, they, I, I, I don't have the information prepared to see how many from every brand Cuban being sold every year, but... All that five my main brands, you know, Hoyo, I mentioned me, Hoyo, Monte, uh, Romeo, they all famous worldwide. Cohiba, you know, everyone know, uh, if you show some new smoker, Cohiba and Monte, I can guarantee he'll recognize Cohiba way more before than the Monte. I, I got a question from someone I know. <laughs> Do I know him? No, no. Um, someone, I'll tell you later. But, so, this person asked, um... How do you differentiate between plume or mold in a cigar? Does plume even exist? No, there's no such thing as plume. Yes. Plume is. is complete nonsense. Yes, it is. Mm. I have cigars with plume. Okay, I'm gonna, well, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get you to bring them in. We're gonna put them under the microscope. But, okay, plume isn't necessarily something that you will see in most cigars. It is extremely rare. To have rare. plumes, let's start that way. To have plume, you but let me just let me just ten years minimum. Okay. You can't have plum on cigar made twenty nineteen. It's okay. mold. 100%. But let me let me let me just quantify what I'm saying. <clears throat> if you go into a cigar re if you go into a cigar store, or if you open up a box of cigars and it looks like plume, nine nine and a half times out of ten, it's mold. Yes, they're new cigars. It is not gonna be plume. I don't have I never seen plum. On a cigar which is at least 20 years old. I don't know about super aged cigars. So that's something where you're going to have to fill in the gap. You know, so, do you know what? We'll, we'll discuss what that. Is, the plume is not wild. It's not, it's mm. not moldy as a cheese. You know, the, the mold. Yeah. Plume is more crystallized substantial. Yes. So that's I, the I, thing. I'll bring you cigars which are covered. Like, they look like covered with salt. Basically, if you have a cigar is covered with salt. So that's not mold. No. If it has a crystalline structure. If you can look through, if you can zoom right into it, and it has a crystalline structure, that is not going to be mold because mold does not have a crystalline structure. It's a more, it's a more organic structure. But every single cigar, and I'm talking about, so I, um, I had a, you know, the La Galera, not the La Galera, sorry. Uh, what's it? Ah, oh. Lorena. No, same brand. Well, El El Rey del Mundo. No. Oh no. La, La Gloria Cubana. La Gloria Cubana. La Gloria Cubana. You know that big humidor with the key, fancy yeah. one? Pop that open. And 
I posted it up and a lot of people were like, oh yeah, that's plume, that's plume, that's plume. And I was like, okay, fine, let's check. Zoomed in, you know, took out my big camera for this one, got some lighting equipment, uh, got a macro lens, zoomed right into it, organic structure. Definitely mold. Definitely yeah, as mold. I say, I can argue for that with everyone. I don't care. I know what I have and I what I've seen. I know no, I no, I, a, okay, but I that, can make the difference between plum and mold. Yes, you know, but nine is mold. Mold but is a mold. If you mold. go into a store, but you were talking about a very different category of cigars, and I think we want to, we should definitely cover that. But if you're going into a store, if you receive a box, and you see anything on the cigar, which people are going to tell you is plume, it's not plume. I'm not going to listen to people. I know what is it. Yeah. You know, but, I, I'm not but, the, to but the cigars that you're thing. talking about, the cigars you're talking about, I haven't seen them. I want to see them. So next week, if you bring them over, I would, if you can, you don't have to. Probably will be not, not next week because some of the cigars, you know me that I'm in the moment. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You did say that, yes. Some of the cigars are stuck uh, in a big humidor and I don't have, I need to, I need a lot of time to dig in them. And of stuff course, of course, yeah. When I build my stuff and when I have all cigars displayed, I'll show you. But uh, as I mentioned, it's a, uh, I know how to find the difference. There is a difference. I know, I know a lot of people will say uh, friends of Habanos have the article. Yeah, I know they have the article. But I'm, I'm not. Let's say I'm not the biggest specialist. But I specialized in vintage cigars. I agree with that. I have 120 years old cigars. I I completely agree. And when with you that. see how they covered with dusty crystal crystals. They're covered with that. Okay. It's not mold. Trust me, that cigar will be a long time gone if yeah. that was mold. It's a hundred years old. It probably will be nothing left if it's mold. But if it's if it's a if it's a super aged cigar, that's a very different category. And I think maybe yeah, I and told I think you, you I think what's have, happening. You can have plume on if the cigar is not at least twenty years old, and there's no guarantee as well. Yeah. I have 30, 40 years old cigar, nothing on them. So here's here's the thing though. If you think it's plume, if you think it's plume, it's probably mold. However, th it's if it's a super aged cigar, we're talking over thirty years or something. Then it might be different. But most people are not buying thirty year old cigars. Exactly. That, you know, if you buy and if you see some white stuff, don't take the advantage. That's a no a plume. That's probably mold. Yeah. I won't say there's no mold or something. No, no. Yeah. There's a ninety nine of the hundred, you know, ninety nine times of hundred it's a mold. But the but thing is there is a other way as well. But the thing I wanna say about that is don't be worried about mold. You can wipe it off. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal at all. I've had a number of cigars that I bought. They've had a little bit of mold on top of it. I don't particularly care. Dust it off. You can smoke it. It's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong. You're not gonna. You're not yeah, gonna yeah. catch Pe anything. People, I've seen the comments. Uh, people uh, say that friends of Habanos. I sent friends of Habanos three times cigars. I don't have any reply. Let's say that way. Have you got your cigars back? No. <laughs> they smoked them. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> friends of Habanos, why are you taking the guy's cigar for, man? What's going on? <laughs> Doesn't matter. That's a, I, I've, I've been dealing with friends of Cabanos like five years ago when I was in proper discussion about that. I don't want to go and argue with anyone. Everyone has his believings. I know what I'm smoking. I know what stuff I have. Uh, next time I can bring you a hundred years old cigar. We can smoke it. You can see how it tastes. It's probably not taste as a decent as what you're smoking now, but you can see the crystalline structure. I would, be, I would happily, I would love to do... And, a Some of the cigars properly. I can bring you, that's their European made cigars. So mm. they're old vintage German Dutch cigars. They usually have foil on them. So you can see the foil because if it's uh, unfoiled, you can just touch the crystallize and you can remove them. You know, they're not going to have, you know, that substance over there. But on the, when, when they're with the seal, you can see inside the seal, it's crystallized. I, I, yeah, today I was, I was giving to a friend a box of those, you know, some old box, and there was a full crystal, and I say, you're lucky that they have a decent crystals in there. I will be, I'm, <clears> again, <throat> I'm very open to any evidence. So, I have no problem with um, looking at any evidence for any particular claim. I'm very happy to. Uh, but so far, anytime someone's presented a cigar, which they said is has got plume on it, you look at it and be like, come on, man. Yeah, I, there's say, a freaking. I, I, I don't there's want to go freaking... into that discussion. It's a long, hours long discussion. There's a whole I've freaking been many times in the different <laughs> forums. People which know me, 
they know that I'm, I'm always try to, you know, I don't want to tell everyone, you know, he, when he have a moldy Cuban cigars, that's a, you know, plum. Probably not, but there is a plum, you know, in my opinion. Also, uh, so I do you think, do you I think ask, that people I have... ask that question, let's say about 20 names from the industry, which they made cigars. So, so just before you carry on with that, do you think that people have used this concept of plume, which is generally only found on super aged cigars as a way to justify or continue selling cigars? Yeah. Yeah, that's the way, you know, if, if, if nobody wants to find mold in the cigars. But it's just so easy to brush it off. Well, sometimes the mold can be inside. It's still dangerous. Mm. You can brush it, but if the mold is on the foot, it can go inside and that's uh, dangerous. So Is it? Well, if it's mold inside the cigar. I don't know. I mean, you could just, it's just yeah, extra flavor. <laughs> I'm not a doctor. I'm not a doctor. I don't know. It might be, not might be, but it's still mold. You're not going to eat mold stuff. Well, if, you, if, it's, if it's on fire, I highly doubt it's going to cause any, any yeah, issues. Yeah, but you breathe it. You know? No, but it's. I don't know. I'm not. I don't want to go in there because if, I don't know. I mean, it's literally on fire. I, yeah, I don't think it's going to cause any problems. Any biologists in yeah, we're not. We're not. <laughs> I'm not a bio, as I say, I'm not a biologist. I don't want to go into that. But as a people, you know, you don't want to see. Imagine you buy a decent collectible box, behicle, whatever. You know, some crazy expensive. You put it in the humidor. You don't touch it for three years. You open it and they're full white. And you say, "Fuck! I don't want to bin them." Let's I'd say that's a that's a mold, uh, that's a plum, and people start believing it because you know they know you buy decent stuff. It could be decent, it could be legit stuff, but it's still moldy because mate, you don't if keep I if, right. If I have a box of bahikas and they get mold in them, you best believe I'm smoking them. I a don't. lot of people will do. I won't say it's smoke them, but there's a way. So yeah, you can wipe them with spirit with the alcohol. You can clean them. You you might not go have anything wrong, you know, just, damage yourself. But just get, just get some cask strength. You'll be fine. <laughs> still, still, yeah, it's a it's a big discussion. I don't want to go in there. I've been there. I've been discussing that. I'd say, if you don't believe me, don't do it. No, no I, I don't. I don't. It's my opinion. I know what I've seen. I've changed the mind of a few people. But Ray, the same thinking as you. I give them a cigar. But Ray, say, just to clar- just to just to clarify something, I don't disbelieve you. No, I, I don't a, disbelieve it's you. My opinion there. No, no, no. But I don't disbelieve you. I'm, as I said, I'm very happy to look at cigars and change my mind. I'm, I'm very open to that. I want to, you know, I, to be honest, I want to be wrong about this because if there is something called plume, then that would be brilliant. Why wouldn't that be good for the cigars? I start telling you, I was that, been talking that be, with... That would be an amazing thing for cigars in general. La- last year, year and a half, I've been on a many Zoom calls, live meeting shows with a lot of people from the industry. Name someone I've probably been on a Zoom. I asked for that question about 20 of them. All of them say, yes, it exists, but not many people have seen it. That was the most competitive answer. So it's like a unicorn. <laughs> so most of that people smoke very old cigars. They have a decent collection. Shut up, with, they exist. <laughs> with, uh, with, you, with old cigars and stuff. All of them say, yes, it exists. I don't know. I was very curious. That was That's a question which I ask everyone, which is... For many many years in the industry wants to see what they know but what they think but it's a it's a another discussion which is it uh, is another discussion yeah. once i i set up my stuff my cigars and i we can film in there and i can show you some old stuff and you can see the difference in the structures on the on that cigars you know especially if it's a old as a hundred years old or something mm-hmm. it's very different structure on the top and then the cover and the, and the wrapper and stuff they feel different the, the the thing that i've i will say to someone is if you purchase a cigar from a UK retailer and you're not happy with a good UK retailer, um, if you're not happy with something, let's say you, you purchase a cigar and it's plugged, you can have it replaced. Yes. They will replace it. Yes. If you have a cigar which has got a bad draw and you're unhappy about it, doesn't matter what the price is, even if it's a Bahika, a good retailer, even if you bought it online, they will replace it. Yeah. If you if you want to return some cigars because they you know they had mold or something like that, they will re, they will usually they won't sell them if they moldy. If no, it's a usually legit they, one, yeah. they check them. If you buy sealed box, I always say you can't buy sealed boxes from UK anyway. You can't. Nope. Okay, I didn't know that. But if you buy from abroad as well, mm. tell the people who sell in the box, open the box and check the quality. So never buy sealed boxes. So we're gonna you talk know, about. It's more collectible if the box is sealed, but it's more dangerous because you might have a lot of mm. problems there. I, so I have been recently I buy a box sealed, 
and I have a lot of problems with that box and I literally bin the box. So with, with the UK market, if it's an EMS cigar, you can't buy your sealed. Okay, I didn't know that. You can't, and because every EMS cigar will be opened, every single one. And, that's what, and we're going to discuss that next week. So that's the subject for next week, which is EMS cigars and its relevance. So if you're interested in that particular topic, make sure you're subscribed and make sure... Oh my God, I'm doing that thing. I'm, <laughs> this is our plug. <laughs> but, it, but it was natural. You know, it flowed in. Like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> we need someone with the uh, bikini top and stuff to walking around. Haven't subscribed. <laughs> Alex. That's a great segue to our sponsored segment. The <laughs> Shadow Legends. <laughs> oh my gosh. Am I going to start another cigar? I might do. I haven't finished this one yet. Are you fine? How are you finding that cigar? It, it got a bit peppery and then it didn't. Yeah, mine got a middle, little bit funny third, at the end. Middle third was mustardy. Mm. Very fruity and then mustardy. It was good. Mine got quite bitter towards the end, but I got like, we're talking like right at the end. So it's not really something about the cigar. It's just some cigars, a lot of cigars actually, they get uh, relatively bitter or a bit funny when you're on the last inch or something. But I'm trying to like soak up every last drop out of a cigar. Do you think it's because you smoke too fast? That's one of the reasons to come yeah, That can happen. No, because I take forever, man. I mean, that no, was no, a... the last of. You know, a lot of people start rushing the last end of the cigar. That's true. I do do that. Yeah. And the reason for that is because the last third, it tends to go out a little bit quicker. Yeah. And you start rushing it. Yeah. And you bring the bitterness. Yes. So that's, that's good. But again, I, that's not a cigar. That's not the cigar's fault. So I completely appreciate that. And I get that it's not the fault of the cigar. It's not the fault of anything. It's just, just one of those things. Just, you just got to deal with it. Uh, but I will try and make the most out of the cigar, because yeah, I love cigars. I love cigars. <laughs> yeah, a lot, you can see a lot of a lot of people in the in the social media. They just been literally half of the cigar. Oh, you, you know what? That. This one time, right? This one time we were hanging out. I think we were all together. I'm not going to point out Alex. Shut up. Um, you literally said this less than a week ago. <laughs> Live on YouTube. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I didn't. I didn't mean to call and you out. Bear in mind, you're also the person who's the uh, the first person to say to any new smoker, "Oh, if you don't like it, grab another one, or, or just you know." If yeah, you yeah, yeah. But, it, put it down. Like, <laughs> but 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 the thing is that you tell. You know what? I'm not. I'm not gonna have a go at you. I'm not gonna have a go at you because you know. No, actually, no. If I'm you sorry, probably... this one. I didn't change the cameras. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this one time we were having a herb at Isho, right? Uh, we were all together. We were hanging out. And you know those um, hand-rolled Cubans that you got me? Yeah. Really nice ones. I was in love with those cigars. And I thought as a, as a like, you know, I thought I was being like really nice and generous to this one guy who came who was a new, new cigar smoker. And I thought, oh, you know, I'll give him this one. You know, he'll like really enjoy it because this is an amazing cigar. And it's not that heavy. It's very light body, very relaxing, but not strong at all. The guy took two puffs and threw it in the ashtray. <laughs> oh my gosh I didn't say anything to him I didn't say a word to him but in my in my head I'm like, it hurt no, if man if he can't smoke it if you don't like it yeah, but I just thought to myself like listen man if you're gonna commit to something commit to it don't freaking say you're gonna smoke a cigar and then take two puffs and then sit back down and be like oh yeah I'm fine with now mate oh but that's why that's why in uh, we're going back to cigar aficionado <laughs> so someone wants to make a video about my collection <laughs> I want to make a video about your collection. Yes, guys, we will have a video. I'm, I'm in the process of building my walking small humidor. Once we set so, up that one, we will uh, bring the cameras there. We can make the film there and I can show you some of the uh, unicorns I have. We'll I have some unicorns. Uh, I, used, I, I need to tell you that I don't usually have many sealed boxes because I smoke them. I don't keep cigars for watching them and just showing <laughs> them and show them off and stuff. No, I smoke mine. I, I smoke all my cigars. There's no box which I wouldn't open. I have vintage Cuban Davidoffs, open boxes, smoke them. I have uh, uh, Cubans from the pre-revolution, you know, pre-embargo, open and smoke them. It's a... Uh, it's a uh, cigar for smoking for me, but it, definitely we can make something like that if people are interested. We can talk about the uh, hundred, hundred. The oldest uh, cigar I smoke is uh, made, uh, you know, two centuries ago. Well, Ray, so this is what uh, we're gonna do. Yeah. Alex and I are gonna turn up with you know a bunch of gimbals and some cameras, and then we're gonna go to town in your collection. We're gonna have a look at exactly what you've got, and uh, we'll take it from there. Um, Don't dash. <laughs> it happens, man. That's just part of the. That's just part of the charm, isn't it? If you haven't asked yourself, then you haven't smoked cigars enough. <laughs> but yeah, look at the line. 
Good one. No one can see it. No one can see it. Switch the camera. Uh, you just put it down there. Oh. Put it in front of your face. No, no, you still can't see it. Do you think I've got time to smoke this one? In front of your face. There we go. Now they can see it. So, do you think I've got time to smoke this one? Yeah, go on. You can smoke after that, after the mm. live. It's like half that. nine. We'll I've got the uh, Monte Cristo so. Dante, 2016 limited edition. I'm not familiar with all the names. I know them how they look. I don't know what's the specific name on the limitada. They used to use different names on every limitada. Yeah. Just to name them by different. I know most popular, but uh, not it's, sure what's that. I'm gonna be honest with you. This is okay. In terms of limited editions, this one was. Mm, I, I mean, it feels really well packed, though. I have to tell you, it feels really well packed. I think they must, this might have a bit of a tough draw. You know, all this time I've been talking about Cuban cigars, <laughs> and now together, <laughs> and then, and then I've been yeah. cursed by it. I've been cursed by it. I know I'm gonna, I'm gonna get one, which is gonna have that bad draw or bad construction. So, yeah. uh, Joey Chatterjee was saying, uh, with your new smoker friend, just give him a quorum. Oh, oh. I say give him a Gurkha, but you know, quorum, bring Gurkhas up. quorum Maduro, it's not that bad. Let's say that way. But the fact that you have to say it's not that bad. It's not wow, <laughs> but it's smokable. I wouldn't, I smoke one, I won't smoke another one probably, but I would say it's not that bad. The Quorum Maduro. Okay, Gurkha versus Quorum. Well, the fact I didn't find a decent Gurkha yet. <laughs> so, well, I have, I told you, I have a Gurkha Nicaragua, which uh, is made back. by, uh, uh, you know, the Agonosa leaf. They they need they should be banging cigars. Okay, here's what I'm gonna here's the challenge I'm gonna put out to everyone. And Gurkha are five times more expensive than yeah, they are. Here's the challenge I'm gonna put out to anyone. Find a good Gurkha <laughs> and then we'll see if we can review it. That's the challenge. Find one, just one. We're not gonna review Gurkha, guys, don't worry. We're not doing reviews. No, not on the it's, live uh, videos. Uh, but I, in some point I'm gonna smoke some of it. You know, the Gurkha Nicaragua, the Gurkha San Miguel, I have a couple of them. Already, I've probably tried them, smoked them. Even if I'm not alive, I'll give my expressions I when I smoke them. Down. But uh, yeah, uh, quorum, I smoke two. One Connecticut, I believe, normal one, one Maduro. The Maduro wasn't that bad, but it wasn't. It was $2 cigar. You can say that's a $2 cigar. Mm. Last week, I yeah. smoked and fifty cigar, and I was really, really enjoyed that cigar. Which cigar was that? It's called Artisan. Artisan made specifically for a shop in US famous. It's called the, uh, the shop famous cigars. Mm -hmm. it's oh, made yeah, yeah, by, it's made it. by Placencia and it was really really nice cigar. You can still say it's a cheap one, but there was a taste. There's a different complexity in the different thirds and stuff and it's way amazing construction and it's I checked the prices. It's dollar and 20. Wow. So but yeah. I'm, gonna do, I'm gonna do something a little unconventional. Alex, do you mind just tipping this in that big ashtray, please? <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. We, I don't know what we do without Alex. You know, he's uh, he's here just keeping everything together. <laughs> so thank you, Alex. The big minus of Alex, guys, is yeah. uh, he's just Alex, hiding behind the camera. Alex he doesn't want to be in front of it. I I would prefer uh, some lady with the nice looking. Um, yeah, we can get we can get Alex on <laughs> we can get Alex on the third camera. <laughs> <laughs> Then I have to wear a suit. I mean, I'm wearing a suit now, obviously. Oh yeah, of course you are. Of course you are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're all wearing suits. I feel I, I am uncomfortable as hell right now in this. I'm definitely not wearing a jumper. Uh, next week I'm not wearing a suit. You need to this wear is, a hat. I'm, I'm not wearing right, a suit. No one can see your top button. No one can see my top button. If you want to undo it. No, the buttons. You all, whenever yeah, you sit your, down, your you always. Oh, the trousers. No, the trousers are fine. It's just I've got this, and then I've got a waistcoat, and you know, I'm just doing it because. Last week I had like loads of comments come back to me. I say loads. I had like three comments come back to me. And go, you go like, oh, how come you weren't dressed up? I'm like, come on, man. It's I'm I mean, in my house. We've got to test it. Who, who wore it better? We've got this man in corner number one in, in the brown corner. Oh yeah, thanks for that. Basically in the background, <laughs> and uh, and Ray in the white corner. That's very racist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so let's not compete there. No, I think Ray wins no, every I think, time. I think Ray wins both. <laughs> <laughs> so. <sighs> Cuban cigars, New World cigars. Um, another thing that I think is that, in general, I think that people who are completely against Cuban cigars should give Cuban cigars another try. Especially when it comes to aged Cubans. 
Um, I know that some people will like, nope, never want to smoke a Cuban. But I think you, you know, you guys should. I never heard someone they say never want to smoke a Cuban. I've, I've heard, heard a couple the of other people. way. I've heard a couple of people. But someone telling no, I won't smoke a Cuban. They all dog uh, shit or stuff like that. It's, I've uh, heard that a couple of times. Okay. Um, I say heard. I've read it in comments a bunch of times. But and, and for those people who uh, only smoke Cubans. Give New Worlds a try. Honestly, they're really good cigars. And that's coming from someone who produced a video saying Cuban cigars are the best. And I do, in my view, think that Cuban cigars are the best. But for me, not, 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 I mean, when I say that they're the best, I don't mean to say that they're the best by default. Because that's not true. That's not true at all. Yeah, we, 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 I think we cover a lot of topics in, the, in, mm. in here. There's a big discussion. We can't cover it, everything for two hours. So don't, yeah. don't get me wrong. What, well, let's say that, what are the pros and cons on the New World Series, in your opinion? So, the, the pros and cons, this is a pro and a con. The pros and cons with New World Cigars is, there's a huge selection. There's a, such a ridiculous number of cigars available from New World brands, that it can be, and this is especially for a lot of old school Cuban smokers, it can be a little intimidating, to some extent, and it can be a little overwhelming. Because you're like, well, where'd you go, right? Because you've got so much, so much, s such a great selection. But with Cubans, most people that smoke Cuban cigars smoke a select few Cuban cigars. And that's all they generally smoke. They might smoke like a few, you know, odd, really fancy ones on occasions, but in general, they will kind of feel, go back and forth between three or four brands but when you start going into new worlds then a good thing is that you've got an incredible selection you've got such a ridiculous selection that it's going to meet almost anyone's taste buds there's no way that there isn't a new world cigar that's going to be good for a strict cuban smoker it's just impossible because there's such a huge selection but also it takes a lot more time and effort and a lot more investment to find those select few uh, New World cigars that are going to be like, wow, these are the ones for me. So I think that's the major pro and con of New World cigars. And yeah. I might go more deeply into that. Go on. So my biggest pros on to the New World, it's, yeah, you mentioned the taste variety. You have so many different tastes, you know, strong, uh, not strong, peppery, uh, sweet, sour, stuff like that. Uh, Price-wise, so some of them are well known, well better priced than some of the Cubans with the uh, same uh, characteristics, probably. Mm. Um, quality control, maybe it's an, one idea better than the Cubans. To some extent, Instead of possibly, the yeah. look on the cigar, you know, some of the New World cigars look amazing. Some yes. of the Cubans have uh, veins and, you know, not a decent, you know, not look that great as, uh, as, a, <clears throat> as, a, as a construction. I mean, even Gurkha, the, Gurkha cigars look amazing. Even the, the bands, you know, band not bring you anything to the taste. No. But for me, the band is very important part of the cigar, the cigar look. Yes. So basically, when presentation you go to the store, is important. Yeah, when you go to the store, you buy with your eyes first. Mm. You need to, especially if you if you don't know the cigars. Imagine you're a Cuban smoker, you go into the New World store, show, shop, and there's a 500 brands of New World cigars. What are you gonna buy? Probably the one you like more. Yeah. The more colorful one, or the more you bring your attention to the details and stuff. So that's how Gurkha wins. That's how Gurkha makes his sales. <laughs> that that's a big pros for the for the new world. Uh, I think the the pros into the Cubans, they have their specific taste, which can be implemented. I I I have some new worlds which been very close taste wise to the Cubans, but still Cubans is a Cuban. Um, you can tell when you smoke a Cuban. Also, like just I, I sorry like, for sorry for interrupting, but. Just now, like I've switched from the Oliva to this. Immediately, yeah, same. I, immediately, I say, yeah. you can just, it's gone from that new world kind of vibe straight to that Cuban and you can tell there's that massive contrast. And this is something that you pick up even in blind taste tests in, in almost any kind of scenario. You can tell when you're smoking a Cuban cigar. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of people love Cuban cigars because 
you've got this particular uh, particular vibe which is not really something that you're going to find in New World. But in if if you say that that oh Cuban cigars have a particular profile which is something you can't find in New World, then the opposite is true as well. It has to be, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The opposite sure. is true as well. New World cigars have a particular vibe and a particular profile which isn't going to be found in Cubans. So, although I use that point as a as a pro for Cubans and I use it as one of my points, if I'm being completely honest, it's a bit of a silly point to make because that's true for both sides. That's true for both sides. It's just which one do you prefer more? That's all it is, really. Yeah, the, the, my biggest pro for Cuban cigars as well is uh, aging. You know how much I like aging cigars. That's my passion. I love to age the cigars. I like to try them differently into different uh, years when I buy them and stuff. And uh, a lot of the new worlds, they're not aged well. They're not. They completely lose a lot of stuff. I have a... I don't know what either the guys here about uh, know about the cigar called uh, El Cobre. El Cobre is a brand made by Oliva. It tends to be one of the strongest cigars when they produce them. They call them Bruce Lee. That's the nickname. <laughs> That's kicking, you know, that cigar have that kicking. I managed to smoke El Cobre, uh, one of the new releases, and believe, trust me, that cigar really can shake you if you don't eat sweet or stuff. That strong is that cigar, well, even can, myself. Well, can I just say something? But Sorry, go on. But... I have, I managed to find El Cobre made in 10 years ago. Um, I find a collector which have some of them, I buy some of them. That El Cobre have nothing else, nothing even close to the new El Cobre. It's mild, not have any kick, it's just, eh, cigar. So that cigar is not good for aging because it look his uh, identity. You know, so that cigar is potentially kick, you know what you're smoking. So do you think that the, the difference between because you mentioned that Cuban cigars, they don't use a lot of Lijero leaf. Or they don't use any Lijero? They use Lijero. No, which one uh, was? No, in the, it's not that strong as the, the other ones. Okay. The New World. So, do you think it's the fact that Cuban cigars are blended more towards flavor? I, again, I'm just generalizing in such a silly way that this is not... any. The point that I'm making here, it's, it's more of a... It's a question, it's not a point. But do you think that uh, Cuban cigars are generally leaning more towards flavor and complexity where you know when, when you age them they kind of blend in a particular way and new world cigars are produced more because they are produced more for the u.s market let's be fair are they produced more because the u.s market favors strength and when you take the strength away it takes away one of the fundamental characteristics so it kind of no, but defeats it, the um i don't think it's the strength it, no? it's a uh, yes u.s market is big there's a different people, different looking, different opinion. You know, they have different vibes. Some people like crazy strong cigars, some people don't like them. And in the Cubans, they can't find that variety. You know, there's a people which like LFD, they smoke only LFD. The people like only Oliva. The people like only nice Connecticut low roars or something like that. Uh, there's another aspect coming, I would say, last two, three years. Mm -hmm. The boutique brands. They, they exist for many years. We all know boutique brands, you know, the first boutique brands uh, like uh, Drew Estate, Illusione, uh, Room 101, mm. stuff like that. But now it's a plenty of boutique brands. There's a, uh, online subscriptions like Privada Cigar Club, like uh, Small Batch. The people, the, the guys selling cigars, which they made in 500 pieces. I can name a lot of brands. Ezra Zion, uh, Black Label Trading Company, uh, Nomad. They, they, some of their cigars are made in 500 pieces. Yeah. And people start collecting them, start demanding them. They want that one. That cigar is not much different than some normal release probably somewhere. But people want to buy them. And, you know, the, the idea to have something rare, something which the other guy don't have, like Lost and Found uh, project with Caldwell. Yeah. What Lost and Found project of Caldwell is, is basically Robert Caldwell. He makes cigars in many factories. So he scoop around the factories in, down in uh, all the countries. Find the bales with tobacco which nobody using and which probably will be enough for a hundred bundles, mm. hundred boxes. He yeah. don't make boxes, he make uh, packages, you know, carton packages. So he, he produced some cigar. He don't know how the cigars will taste or even if someone liked them. But because it's produced only in thousand pieces, people buy them. Some of them collect them, never smoke them. Yeah. Just they, they buy the next uh, Lost and Found edition, the next Lost and Found edition. And and people want that one. With the Cuban, you don't have that one. You The Cuban, you know... You know that next year 
you will have three limited editions or five limited editions yeah. or 20 new limited editions and everyone waiting for them and that's it only five new cigars that's it yeah so that's you true. don't have uh, you know how you taste your romeo and Juliet. you know how the monte cristo number two will taste you know how you taste uh, cohiba uh, sigu five or stuff and you're waiting for something new that new coming like you know what is new now uh, now is coni two you know the coni senior two the first cigar of 51 ring gauge in cuba so now a lot of people start looking for that cigar because yeah. it's something new. Maybe it's the same blend as Connie B or yeah. Connie A, but people want it because it's new. And that's it. It's only one or two. But that Vitola makes a big world, difference to the to the way that it can potentially taste. And, maybe and it's a difference. Yeah, I, yeah. I didn't smoke it. No, even, even the same blend. Um, for example. It's supposed to not have difference even if, it, yeah. even if it's the same blend, especially with the new worlds. Well, that's the, the, the biggest problem to make in Lancero. Because the Lancero is the hardest Vitola to make. Mm. And to make the same blend Lancero, so imagine you're producing uh, Asylum. Asylum cigars are usually big ring gauge cigars. 60 mm. ring gauge, 70 ring gauge, they have 50. Imagine he wants to make uh, Asylum 13 in Lancero. It's going to be difficult. Very difficult. He, he, despite the fact Christian Hero is a great blender, it's a great guy, it will be ridiculously different to make the same taste as Asylum 13 on, on a Gordo 60 by 60 and in Lancero 7x38 it will be incredible hard but to, to make but, but the, the same blend the thing that I'm, I've noticed is that the different Vitolas among different cigars or among the same kind of line of cigars does make a difference in terms of how it tastes and how, it, how, how um, uh, what, the, what the profile is to some extent so you, you have an overall vibe for example, the Siglo range of cigars, very similar blend, right? They use a similar kind of tobacco across the board for all this, all the diff all the different cigars. But the Siglo One and the Siglo Five taste very different to the Siglo Six. Maybe not very different. That's a, that's a wrong word. I'm not. I, I don't want to go deeply there because I'm not entirely sure. But I think they made them in the different factories. Are they made in different factories? Maybe. Because <clears throat> I because based that's on mean they use different tobacco. Despite the fact it's all Cuban tobacco, all same. But, but I've been but, but I've been told that the Siglo range has the, the same kind of tobacco. Maybe, maybe I don't I don't know. It's, no, it's the same tobacco, but the tobacco. It's a different blend. Uh, Is that what you're saying? The blend's supposed to be the same. It's the, where the tobacco grow and the uh, year of the crop and stuff. That's make difference. The tobacco grown here and over there, it will be different. Mm. Even if it's same same seed, same way uh, stuff. The minerals in the in the in the soil will be different. The terroir is different. Uh, and also, if you if you say the crop is this year, the next crop, the that cigar is made from the crop made in 2020. Mm. The other one is made in 2019. The rain, the makes soil, a huge difference. It's of course, huge difference. So that's why sometimes, uh, you know, uh, you have such a difference in when you smoke in a Cuban cigars because they they usually don't have that. Uh, you know, as as far as I think they they don't ha try hard to implement exactly the same taste. They uh, they use the same recipe. But, you know, the same recipe is not always the same taste. But it's also because they have a, a shortage of land in terms of how much they can grow. So they can only grow on certain areas where they actually grow. Well, they produce the amount of what they grow. You yeah. know, they don't say, we're going to sell uh, 200 million cigars if we can produce only 220 million. Mm. They won't sell. That's why you have limited stuff as uh, Bejique, you know, uh, the limited editions which they arrive in a you know, small amount and stuff like that. Mm. Because they, they can't produce more than that. Same with the New World Limited stuff. You know, some someone find the tobacco got nowhere and find a small um, amount of the tobacco, decide to start limited edition cigar because he can't have the consistency to make that cigar every single year. And and he don't want to be ashamed by saying, I'm making a new line, that will be my core line. And every year the core line is different tastes. Mm. And, you know, some maybe have some fans which realize that start you know moaning about and that's how you have bad reputation that's an interesting point yeah i mean <clears throat> you do find this is why cuban cigars from certain years are far more popular than cuban cigars from some others yeah, all the all, all the let's say decent cuban collectors i know they don't buy a box of cubans from a specific factory they, they know the code they know which factory is made, they don't buy them, they don't touch them. And they look in the code, they don't touch them. Hmm. They know which one wants to buy. If the, the, the code of the factory is what they're looking for, they go for it. They pay double amount, they pay yeah. triple the price. But only if it's that certain code. 
it doesn't matter what the year yeah the year it's some years are known for better crops some not but they don't care that much for the year they care about the cigar factory code why the factory code because some factory make better cigars than other is it just, you know, the, the, is the, just the, the construction everything they use they choose the better tobacco mm. you know el legito the factory made well-known cohibas they used to choose some of the tobacco before the other factories but cohibas are all, all producing el legito isn't it 99 percent yeah they so produce very... some of the small vitos in the, the other factory the yeah but they're, they're the there. machine made yeah not the not the actual yeah, so, core so products a lot of people wants to yeah the, the cohiba is not of them but if you buy some monte cristo they made in few factories if you buy h upman you know people like epi2 it's very popular cigar you know epi2 is one yeah, of the yeah, yeah, well yeah. more popular cigars there's a people which don't touch epi2 made in whatever factory yeah i think they made in two or three factories i'm not entirely sure about epi but yeah it's people care about that especially the, the decent collection the collectors i i used to have a list with some of the factory names i i've been on a few groups with the cuban collectors and they share that knowledge so i have some list somewhere in my in my document somewhere in my computer where basically which factory is good to buy which factories don't touch them of course habanos i'm, I'm gonna say oh these factories are better than the other ones because um no, that's information one. collected by the collectors you yeah know? they just buy and try yes it's, it's they, just it's just a process of elimination isn't yeah it? someone collect the data and say basically there's a there's a specific groups in facebook and other social media which are only specialized to the cuban collectors so they talk in between them they have the zoom sessions meetings where they discussing uh, someone buy a box from this year for make that factory or some new code there's always new codes they change the codes all the time and people just wants to know between them which are collectible which so, so this is predominantly why you're interested in the Gurkha cigars that you've got because they were produced in a particular factory that you know yes ha, are generally uh, Men, known for producing good, good cigars, cigars. Yeah. yeah so one but of the it, best blenders in the world is there <clears throat> but is it the best the, is it the best blender who's who's rolling those particular Gurkha cigars the blender is uh yeah the, the, the blender is uh, uh Emiliano Fernandez I think is his name is a main guy in uh, Agonosa factory Agonosa leaf factory so he I believe he's one of the biggest producers at the moment. He produces cigars for many, uh, many, many, oh, not only for Aganosa or Casa Fernandez, which is their own brands. Uh, and uh, they make cigars for many companies. And basically, if you come with him, they pay him enough, he'll make you a decent blend. He'll blend you a good cigars. And Gurka, with the new CEO, uh, Juan, what is his name? He seems like he knows what, he do, what he's so doing. So he go approach, he approached uh, Emiliano. He tell him I want Gurkha made in this factory, mm. pure Nicaraguan cigar, not Honduras, not a Peruvian, Colombian, whatever they use. So he make him a three blends. Uh, I didn't try any of them three. I have two of them. And everything what Aganosa made, I like it. I like the, they're a bit strong. Then usually their strong, cigars are strong. They're very tasty. And I want to try them. That's why I want to try them. That's why I told you there is no cigars which I didn't try. And I will say, no, I'm not going to try it. Never. I want to try them. Of course. And I'm, so my limitation is ridiculously strong cigars. That, that's the only place where I don't kind of dabble. So that's my, that's my limit. So if you, if you have a cigar which is unnecessarily strong, then I'm going to be like, okay, I'm not going to try that one. Because I know my limitations. I know that it's not going to work I've well been the me. same. I've been the same when I start smoking. I, you know, I smoke, <coughs> I remember first crazy strong cigar when I smoke. It was a small game we made with my friends, some of my friends. We just basically send each other blind tasting cigar uh, just to see what you tasting and, uh, you know, to try to guess the cigar and stuff. And uh, someone sent me Cohiba uh, Black Dot, which is uh, the, the US blend, copy yeah. version yeah, yeah. of the Cuban ones. I never smoked any Cohiba non-Cuban before that. Mm. And I say, OK, it's look dark. I have dark cigars, so let's say let's try it was a cold day outside, sitting outside, and it was afternoon. It wasn't even evening. I, I didn't have my dinner and stuff. I said, I'm going to smoke that cigar again. I'm going to have a dinner and stuff. Basically, halfway to the cigar, I feel like I've been drunk like half a bottle of whiskey wow. or something. I just feel dizzy. You know, I don't drink anything. I drink tea. You know I me. Mean? I drink a lot of tea, so I, it's lunchtime. I'm not going to drink whiskey at lunch. Mm. I feel dizzy, and I say, I'm going to get some chocolate from inside. So I stand up walking and i was walking like that and i start shaking wow you know i just basically making that i can't stop shaking it's not cold it was cold but i was I, well, i'm never cold when i'm smoking so mm. 
I start shaking, I feel dizzy. So literally I eat some chocolate, probably stabilized for a little bit, smoke another inch. And I say I can't smoke anymore. It was a Corona size. Wow. Leave the cigar, go inside, literally two hours I can't feel myself. I eat a lot of food and stuff and I don't want to smoke a cigar for the next two or three days. <laughs> That's the first time when I smoke crazy strong cigar. I still didn't try any of that red dot since then. I have one or two in my humidor. I'll probably go back to them, but that's the cigar which basically shake me for the first time and say, wow, what is that? It basically nicotine, you know, nicotine over poisoning or whatever they call it, basically your blood. Nicotine poisoning, yeah. Yeah, so. I had, um, I've had some Cohibas uh, from the US. Had a similar experience. <clears throat> I have the strong. blue one. And the white one, they're not strong. I had the red dot. That is the red dot with the black band. They all I, have red dot, I think. I had... Uh, that is black band with red dot, with slightly white around it. It's... I, I can't remember whether it was a black band or not, but I know I'm that I got... I'm sure if I smoke it now, it's not going to be that strong. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, Alex, you have some questions. Go on. It's just because you're speaking about strength. Um, NS, hello, M. Hey. Or S. <laughs> um, it was basically talking about the, the Cuban switch of the blending rules in the 90s uh, in favour of less strength, you know, lower strength blends. Is that something you know much about? Or? Cuban cigars in general are supposed to be not too strong. So That's in kind the 90s of... they switched. I know something. I cannot say it's 100% true. I read about it. I, I, always, I, I need to ask probably someone more in the industry. The New World cigars are usually classified by strength. You know, you have mild, medium, medium, full, full, etc. The Cubans are classified by color. So they're not classified by strength. Mm. None of, no, nobody in Cuba classified the cigars by strength. They were classified by, you know, uh, Colorado, Claro, uh, up to Maduro, Oscuro, so they don't have Oscuro, I think they, it's Maduro only, uh, maximum, but yeah, they don't classify them as a strength. No. Which is weird. But I've never found a Cuban cigar that's been too strong. Yeah, they, they don't have that kind of uh, no. variety of the leaves and stuff. But that's know? why I like Cubans, because they're more palatable. They're easier to smoke. They're more enjoyable in that regard, because I'm not going to feel like I've just been punched in the head. Yeah, but you smoke uh, Oliva, which not strong, which is, wasn't strong cigar. No, that wasn't it's strong, because you had like... It's too flavorful. Yeah. But that, that's had like a bunch of age on it. I can give you a new cigar with, uh, you know... No, if I smoke... If all I sp of examples, if uh, you <coughs> have a new world, uh, called New World, I believe, the line, it's very, very light cigar. Mm. Uh, Larania have uh, Larania Crema, so that's Espinosa cigar. Espinosa have Larania Crema. I can smoke it when I sleep. It's <laughs> that light. It's not going to wake me up even when I'm sleeping. You know, it's very... It's tasty. It's no power at all. There's still plenty of cigars, you know. Cuesta Rey, it's another brand, that made, they made cigars in Fuente, uh, basically it's a Jason Newman cigar, you know, American uh, brand, they made very lightweight cigars, Cuesta Rey usually a very lightweight. I like Olive. We've got, uh, we've got a question from uh, Patricio Lucas, I think, my Bulgarian, my Cyrillic is old, I think I've read that right, uh, like the top five strongest Cuban cigars basically, because um, obviously they're not very strong generally, but... Top five strongest... I hope I read that right. Top five strongest Cubans. I hate, I don't have top five, three, two, ten, whatever top you have. I don't have that. I, I do know that there are. So the strongest Cubans, in my opinion, <clears throat> even if I, I don't really smoke new Cubans, I need to age them first. Probably Bolivar. It's one of the top places. But no Bolivar, because I smoke LC, One of my favorites is the LCDH. What is uh, yeah, the door? Yeah, yeah. It's decent, not strong. Libertador, right? Yeah, I yeah. think it's Libertador. Uh, Libertador. Probably, well, the Maduro, Cohiba Maduro. No, I didn't think that was that strong. They're not that strong. strong. Nah. They're dark, but they're not strong. Partagas have some strong examples. I find Partagas stronger than um, uh, Bolivar. Like Bolivar? Maybe you can you can talk about it because for me, they're not strong at all. I didn't find, so the Bolivar Bellicoso Finos. That one is a, is a cigar that a lot of people talk about how it's the strongest Cuban, it's really strong and blah, 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 this and that. I can inhale them. Oh, well, I'm not going to inhale, but I can, I can smoke the hell out of boxes of them and not feel like they're strong. But then if I smoke a 
Partigas uh, D4, that gets me. That gets me. Not like knock me out, but it gets me a little bit. And the CDP number two kind of hits me a little bit as well. Not not greatly, but I find Partigas to be a little bit stronger than even Bolivar. And that might be just the way that I'm reacting to it, possibly. But I've never found Bolivar to be particularly strong. I've never found it to be something that I thought, oh, this is a strong cigar. In fact, even like while I'm smoking, I don't feel like I'm having a strong cigar. But with Partigas, I do get it a little bit. When I'm smoking, I'm thinking, oh, okay, this has got a bit of a kick to it. You know, I'm, I'm finding it. Oh, <clears throat> uh, Talisman. I think the strongest Cuban cigar that I smoked was the Cohiba Talisman. I found that to be really strong. It's a dark, but... I, didn't th I, I, I wasn't expecting it to be too strong. Maybe it was just that incident where I hadn't eaten a lot. I haven't smoked many Talismans. I've smoked about... When I say smoke... Four or five. I've smoked. Them, I've, I've smoked about five. I've smoked about five as well. I don't find them strong, but uh, no. my palate is way changed for the last few years. I, I smoke now. You know, I smoked Viaje all the other day, which tend to be very strong cigars. Oh wait, sorry. Let me let me stop you there. Um, this actually no, I lie. Um, the talisman had a kick to it, but the strongest Cuban that I've smoked so far is kind of goes back and forth between the Monte 80th. And the Leyenda. I thought they were the strongest Cubans that I smoked. I haven't smoked the Leyenda. Smoked the 80th a few months ago. Mm. Uh, my first and only one so far, the 80th. I didn't enjoy it at all, to be honest. I miss a lot of not, taste. Yeah, it's not, it's not it like a brilliant blunt. cigar. It's yeah. a big cigar for Cuba. You know, mm. 50 or 56 55? something. 55, yeah, something like that. It's decent, decent. One of the biggest Cubans. Yeah. And I didn't enjoy it at no, all. No, I thought the 80th is slightly better than the Leyenda. How but the Leander is the Leander is pretty poor in my view. It's not a great cigar. The only thing really good about that cigar is that because it's got that little bit of strength, it does mellow you out very nicely. It's quite an oaky cigar, but very relatively similar to the 80th. But the 80th does have a few traits, which is which makes it slightly better. But if you didn't like the 80th, I doubt that you're going to like the Leander. It's not that great of a cigar. I I I didn't think it was brilliant, and I don't really. I know a lot of people want them and a lot of people like them because they look very nice. They're very beautiful cigars, especially with the uh, the foot band and the double band on top. But it's it's all show, no tell. Well, I'll, I'll ask you this because uh, Amir Tabash is desperate to know. Um, hi, Amir. Um, I promise I'll ask it of you. Although I think I know Ray's answer already. Uh, he, he was basically asking about your top Cuban and New World cigars. Um, no such thing. No such thing for me, yes. No such thing. I have regular smokes, which I like on a regular basis, but I don't have like, this is my, this, uh, aside from the Fundadores. I'm, I'm experimentator. So for the last year, I, I, I used to record more, most of my smokings, you know, make some notes a lot of the time. Last year, when I checked what I smoked for 2020, I smoked only one or two cigars twice. So I smoked literally about, 300, 400 cigars, maybe more than that. I can't remember the exact name. Around 400, probably. I smoke only one or two cigars twice. Mm. So I, that's why I like to try new stuff. I'm smoking every day new stuff. Uh, go back to some cigars after that. I have cigars which I like and I have which I don't like. Usually, the last few weeks I start posting in a few Facebook groups what I smoke for the week and how I classify them for the like you know the best smoke for the week, the worst smoke for the week, and yeah. But every brand. Show me, tell me a brand, and I can tell which one I like from that brand, which one I don't like. Trinidad. Trinidad, Cuban. Mm. Fundadores, the best Trinidad for me is Fundadores. Oof, by far. Yeah, but by I'm, far. I'm a big Lancero fan. So basically, if Same. the Lancero is not good, I'm going to hate it as well. So, you know what? I find, um, and this is something I put up a post on, on, on the channel as well, asking people between the um, Cohiba and the Trinidad. And the vast majority of people were leaning towards the Trinidad. And I, in, in a lot of comparisons, I find I personally prefer Trinidad cigars definitely over Cohibas. I like the, I like the uh, Fondadores. Amazing cigar. And I prefer most of the other Cohibas instead of the, Fondador, uh, the other Trinidads. Yeah. I'm not fan of Topes, Reyes. Topes is young though. Uh, all of the other Trinidads. They don't Reyes, I thought the Reyes was really good. I'm not a big fan of them. 
the Medio, the, the Media, I've forgotten his name, the Trinidad Media Luna, Media Luna. That is a really good cigar. I thought that was a brilliant cigar. I haven't smoked many. I, in total, I smoked maybe 30 Trinidads for me, that many years and mm. half of them are from the Doris. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll smoke 10, 15 from the rest of the Trinidads. And but the Fun the Doris is like one of those, you smoke it and you're like, wow, they've, they've, they've made something special here. This is not a regular cigar. And it's not that expensive considering, considering how good the smoke is, it's not that expensive. What is it, about 30 pounds in the UK or something? Which is pricey, admittedly, but... Spend 10 more and buy Monte A. No, Monte A is about £100 in the UK now. 40 No. Last time when I see it was a 40 No, pounds. they're about £100. Is it? Yes, in the UK, ah. in the UK. Yeah, you They're can... £50 in, German, in, in Germany. Okay. And that's yeah, in Germany. It's that big difference, yeah. That, that shows how often I buy new cigars. You know, I'm, I'm usually going to auctions, buy old stuff. New ones, not many. Oh, let me just quickly say... Montier versus the Sanchos, Montier wins. They're very, they, they're different. They're different. They're definitely different. I smoked. Um, well, they're <coughs> made in the same factory. They might be made in the same factory, but probably the same people roll them. But they're definitely different. I smoke few Sanchos. Sanchos is good, but it does not taste like a Montier. It does not taste like a Montier. The Montier is a heck of a lot better. One day we're gonna smoke Montier. From the late 70s. Oh. I have a box uh, which been owned by Harold Wilson, the ex Prime Minister. Damn. So when he passed away, there was an auction with all his cigars. I managed to get seven boxes with cigars. I still have three and a half boxes Romeo and Juliet Deux, number one, Tubus. Uh, I have Monte A and some American Thompson or Tomlinson, whatever they call them. Hmm. You've got Montiers from got Monte the Prime Minister. About half box. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that would be experiment to wow. do it one day. We don't need a second cigar for the podcast on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll see we're smoking it the next day. It's a ridiculous size. Yeah. What time is it? Close it's ten o'clock. Ten five past Two ten. Hours and seven minutes. Oof. Well. MS has said that Topes the Topaz LE twenty sixteen. Brilliant smoke. I haven't tried the um, the twenty sixteen version, you know. I want to try it. I want to try it. I, I I've tried the uh, standard ones. I thought they were good. You could tell that it would it need some age. But I thought they were really good. Are we gonna do a final words, final stuff, or we got Canada? Yeah, I think so. Final words: Cuban cigars versus New World cigars. <clears throat> I think the comparison itself is flawed. You can't yeah. really. It, the whole Agreed. idea of one being better than the other is a bit silly. Get the best from both worlds. Yeah. Enjoy the cigars that you like. If you don't want to explore in the new worlds, that's perfectly reasonable. If you don't want to explore in Cubans, perfectly reasonable. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, enjoy the ones that you enjoy. But to suggest that one is better than the other is, well, just ridiculous, isn't it? It's just, I'm it's open just to, to meet everyone who thinks the other way and prefer only one of the worlds. And I can, I can openly meet him and and uh, change his mind. <laughs> I've got plenty of suggestions for the ball stuff. For the new worlds, for the Cubans, I can change everyone's mind if people are open-minded, of course. Oh. And uh, I think with new yeah. world, there's a great deal of selection available. There's lots of choice and there's lots of uh, cigars that you can pick from. Um, I, if, if I was giving any advice to someone who's kind of like going into new world cigars, uh, this, might <clears throat> this might annoy some people, but honestly, just go on some of the rating sites. Just try from the rating. Cause F- find the rating site which you like. Mm-hmm. You know, you would agree. Let's say you have a favorite cigar. You smoke some cigar very often. And find... I, I would use that. Find uh, who's rate your cigar well. Check maybe have similar palette to yours. And mm-hmm. then you can say, don't just go random to someone. Oh, yeah, your course, the reviews. Yeah. You know, uh, to make a proper review, you know, you need to smoke more than one cigar. It's not... It's not really relevant to smoke one cigar and say that's nine exactly, points yeah. or nine points. It's not. It's not indicative to, it's to not smoke in, yeah. one cigar. You, you yeah. can't. It's you not need indicative. more than one, two, three, four cigars with every batch, every every box and stuff. Mm. To let's not go there. Let's not do, not go in the rating stuff. But uh, yeah, in general, I would not separate them. Which one are better? They both have great examples. They both have worst examples. We all Absolutely. smoke in a. Awful Cubans, we all smoke in awful New Worlds. And in absolutely. Other way, we smoke amazing good Cubans and amazing New Worlds. 
So smoke all what you can find, try your palate. Mm. It's no no ideal world, no ideal perfect cigar. No, there isn't. So yeah. Except the Fundadores. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. Um what we're we gonna talk next week. Next week we're gonna be discussing uh EMS cigars. <clears throat> so I've been doing a lot of um Can we add the AMS as well? I haven't done any research on that. Oh, so I don't think there's any I, AMS. I read a lot of AMS. But there's before. not AMS now though, is there? So but there was before. No. So if we classify as a standard, but the reason, some standard, the reason we need to mention them. We could mention them, but the reason why I'm going to stray away from AMS is because AMS hasn't existed for like, what, 20 or something years? And EMS in its current form is very different from what it was when AMS was around. So that's why. Okay. So you can't really discuss them in the same kind of batch. Probably we can, you will talk more we than touch the last upon week. It, yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not usually very familiar with the mm. in details with the EMS. I'll, I'll probably ask you people more so information. So I've, I've been looking into, I've, mm. I've interviewed a bunch of people as well. I've had a in-depth discussion with Hunters and Franco. I've discussed things with Habanos as well. Discussed things with retailers from the UK and retailers in uh, in Europe. As, and uh, just, just to kind of like get a perspective on EMS cigars and what its significance is. So that's what I'm hoping to discuss next week. So... Uh, if you guys, you know, are interested in uh, that kind of a video where we talk in detail about EMS cigars, the significance of EMS cigars, then <laughs> make sure you like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there was a plenty of uh, chatting next week again. Don't, you know, we're not going to stop only to EMS and discuss only EMS and stuff. Feel free to ask any kind of questions. If, we, if we're able to talk and chat about them, we'll have plenty of time, you know. We have originally around two, two and a half hours to talk, so... Plenty of time to discuss any other questions and, and, and bring anything to our attention. Mm. Uh, yeah, feel free to send us a question, send us ideas, uh, you know, plenty of other stuff coming. Plenty of interesting stuff coming as well yeah. for, the, for the future. And yeah, I'm really happy that we, we managed to survive our first show for two and uh, two hours and 10, 12 minutes Yeah, so no, we, we managed to get the technical issues solved. We don't so have great. technical issues so far. Uh, <coughs> Usman promised to try to get the audio and put it in Spotify. So please, guys, I'm going to try and do that. Wanna, yeah, you, you, Last week, you know, we had a lot of technical issues and it just wasn't working. And I tried a number of times to try and get that up. Unfortunately, it just didn't work. This week, we've managed to um, fix a lot of the technical problems. Um, Black Magic Design is a company that produces these switches, and they were kind enough to send me uh, a bunch of them. So, you know, we're now using the uh, the more expensive version <laughs> of the uh, Black Magic Design switcher. So, guys, if you want better quality, spend more money. <laughs> <laughs> we got so, two, we got two final questions that I, I wait I just quickly. So, go on. Thank um, yeah, go on. Um, so, just to wrap it up, we had from Joey Chatterjee who I. Okay, it was about a week late, but uh, I'll ask it anyway. Do you feel cigar aficionado's ratings are fair? Fair or unfair? Quick fire one on that one. Do you feel like cigar aficionado ratings are fair? It depends. Fair? I mean, you can't you can't say fair in a way that cigar aficionado ratings are cigar aficionado ratings. So if you want, as many people agree with them, there's uh, so many people which don't yeah. agree with them. It's it's it's. Do it's we very... near, Do we agree? I don't personally. I... I think the cigar aficionado caters to a particular audience and that audience appreciates cigar aficionado's views and their viewpoint and what, you know, what they Watch our last week video. I know it's, it's two parts with slight technical issues. Yeah, watch sorry the video. The we problems. talk only for cigar aficionado. I think it's a plenty of information there. But in uh, general, what I will say, sorry, but in, in general, if, I, if I'm going to kind of put it in a nutshell, cigar aficionado, you know, it seems like they're kind of losing touch with their audience a bit, um, but they they know what they you know what you know as, as much as I'm, I'm I'm criticizing them, I feel like they also know what they're doing. So they're catering to a particular audience. They're aiming for that, and that audience isn't necessarily the vast majority of cigar smokers. So if you're in the vast majority of cigar smokers, cigar aficionado is probably not um, the uh, the place that you want to get all of your information from. Some of your information, absolutely, because I still use Cigar Aficionado as a source. I will still use them as I a don't. source. I know you don't, but I will still happily use them as a source, but it's not, it's a source as part of a wider network. It's not the source. It's a, a an individual node in a wider perspective. And then uh, our last question from, from Amir. He's, he's in Toronto, he's just wondering... Uh, 
Um, he's in Toronto, wondering about recommendation for good online shops. Or if not, I guess, you know, if you know where to look for one. Toronto's got uh, lots of cigar stores. You can, you can find the lady called Valerie Bradshaw. She's in Canada. I am not entirely sure where in Canada is. Uh, she's one of the best uh, whiskey sommeliers and wine sommeliers. She's very well into the cigars as well. Very, very nice lady. And find her in the social media. Text her, I believe. Uh, she have a website and stuff. Do some li little research. I'm not prepared for the research now. But Valerie Bradshaw, that's the name on the lady. In Canada. And I am sure if even if she can't help you with something, she will give you an uh, idea where to go call or order some stores, some stuff in Canada. I know in Canada is very tough at the moment. They, I think they implement the, the silly bands, you know, the same bands for every cigar. They have a crazy taxation as well there. It's not easy in Canada, but yeah, ask Valerie. She is very, very good friend. Uh, you can mention that I send you there. It's, uh, she know me, so uh, she might be able to help. Perfect. Okay, so my final words much appreciating guys again for the for the watching us all the questions i've seen the chat being very busy alex chatting a lot in there i'm gonna read all the comments later uh, <laughs> if you wanna contact me you know you can find me ray product if i'm in youtube uh, in instagram in facebook i'll everywhere. put up a link to the instagram yeah usman will put the link uh, if you have any specific question for something uh, let me know i'll find the answer for you if i'm if i don't know of course i don't know everything and we hope in next week will be bigger and better like subscribe don't forget we're not pretty as some of the uh, youtubers and uh, you know ladies with the big eyes and uh, funny backs and stuff but we we have our our hey our man opinion. hey man you might be saying that about you but you know i came in a three-piece today i mean <laughs> i mean look at my jumper <laughs> <laughs> Hey, yeah, I got listen. I got comments on my Instagram. That that is from me. <laughs> I'll, I'll let I'll let Usman to close the the show and yeah. Yeah, no, thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I think it's been a a great one. I really appreciate you guys hanging through all this time and uh, thank you for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next one. Next video is going to be about EMS cigars. So if you're interested in that, make sure you like and subscribe and all that good stuff because it does help this. It does help support the channel and you know, just helps us continue to grow. So um, yeah, see you guys uh, in the next one.